TikTok, time to rock. Good evening and good morning and good afternoon to all the Christians, the Muslims, the Jews, the atheists, the agnostics, the Buddhists, the Hindus, and yes, even you Rastafarians who are watching from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood, and with me is the Robin to my Batman, Sam yeah. Shamoon, the Assyrian Encyclopedia. How's it going, Sam? Batman up. Praise God. And you know, it's my habit, David. I always have to start with prayer because you know that I believe and you believe anything good that comes from us is because of the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's just praise the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, Father, we beseech you in the name of Jesus. Anoint this session. <clears throat> Anoint David and I and fill us with your Holy Spirit for the glory of your son, Jesus, and bless everyone who's present. Anoint us to speak truth without error and speak it clearly and passionately so that every Muslim will see the truth and fall in love with Jesus and every Christian will be strengthened in their love and passion for Jesus and bless us to be sold out for you, Father, because we love you. We love your son, the Lord Jesus. We love your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over. Bless this for the glory of Jesus and bless our loved ones. Bless my daughters and be with us in Jesus name. May Christ increase. So. Good to be with my with uh, the Dizzle and with my brothers and sisters in Christ and also Muslims who are here. Welcome. We welcome you and we hope that you will see the truth by the grace of God and ask your toughest and best, you know, challenges because mm -hmm. that's what we're here for by the grace of Jesus Christ. So let's do this. Amen. And uh, for those of you who have been watching recently for about the past three or four live streams, we've been having some technical difficulties, usually mostly at the beginning where um, the, the connection will be lost uh, at the beginning. Um, so I was expecting the connection to be lost here at the beginning just because it's been happening several times. Hasn't gone out yet, but uh, we normally start off just by answering a few questions or comments at the beginning before we get into the topic. Yeah. So that if there are any te technical difficulties, they'll, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to deal with if it's in the middle of a, uh, uh, responding to a specific question, whereas if you're in the middle of a topic and you start getting uh, technical uh, interruptions, yes. then it's right. uh, it's more of a distraction. Uh, now, Sam, we have here. Yes. This is hate speech. Yes, that's what. We, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, Sadiq Ahmed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, now, uh, Sadiq, maybe you could explain what part is hate speech. Uh, I mean, we we listed as the topic Allah praise for Muhammad. Why do we say that, Sam? Because the Quran says Allah prays for Muhammad. So if that's hate speech, that means Allah's hating on your prophet. Right? All right. Well, right. I mean, okay. so if, wait, 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 Sam, Sam, if, if that's what the Quran says and yes. a Muslim says it's hate speech, then he's saying that yeah. the Quran is hate speech. That's right. Allah is is a hate monger because he's hating on Muhammad for stating that he prays for it. Because remember, the Quran is a speech of Allah. So it is Allah who's doing the hating by stating that he prays for Muhammad. So if that's hate speech, blame Allah, because we're simply quoting his speech. Now, hang on, because I've got a problem here, right? So Sadiq here just said that the Quran is hate speech. But I've heard that saying anything negative about the Quran is itself hate speech. And so yep. Sadiq is spreading hate speech right here in the chat. Yes, this, you better this, believe this it. This is horribly disturbing. A Muslim who is slandering the Quran and and vilifying Muslims for what their scripture teaches. And it's the Muslim who's doing it. Mm -hmm. Said Sadiq, you better repent. Yeah. Stop spreading your hatred against Islam and Muslims, Sadiq. And uh, this is just really interesting um, because notice what we're doing here, right? Um, we're sitting here opening up the YouTube page live so that any Muslim can raise objections or raise challenges. The hate speech, the actual calls for death and so on, are coming from Muslims in the, in the chat, right? The, the, yes. the only actual legitimate hate speech that I've seen um, is, either directed, uh, is either directed towards us from Muslims, or occasionally you do have people saying things like nuke Mecca and stuff like that, and we, we block people for saying those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah that's silly, um, yes. But that's what we're good. doing here, we, we're saying, okay, here's what the Quran says. Here's how we're understanding it. Here's how your classic Muslim commentators and scholars have understood this. What is your response? So notice yes. what Sadiq considers hate speech, just any sort of open, honest discussion or dialogue about Islam. Why? Because in the Islamic mindset, uh, in the Sharia mindset, 
any any open questioning or, or criticism of Islam has to be uh, dealt with through physical violence. And so any sort of speech that disagrees with Sharia at all is hate speech. And the reason that's disturbing is there are countries around the world that are making hate speech laws and they're thinking they're doing they're doing everyone a favor by doing this, not realizing that the Islamic view of hate speech is anything they disagree with. And so, yes. uh, yeah. And then if he's going to be consistent, is he now going to accuse Allah and his messenger of hate speech for vilifying, <clears throat> attacking Jews and Christians and pagans for their respective beliefs? Because, you know, this passage full well, you cite it all the time. Chapter 98, verse 6. Doesn't the Quran say that the people of the book and the idolaters, those who associate partners with Allah, <clears throat> who do not believe in Muhammad, they are the worst of all beasts, the mm -hmm. worst of all creatures. I mean, <clears throat> when it comes to animals, we're worse than dogs, we're worse than rats. We are the worst of the lot. Now, wouldn't that be hate speech? Uh, no, not according to not according to Muslims. And, and that's what's disturbing. You could say, hey, uh, Surah 98, verse 6, Jews and Christians are the worst of creatures. That a problem. That's what Sam just asked. Um, Surah 9, verse 29, fight those who do not believe in Allah. Is that hate speech? No. But, but it's calling for violence. Still no. Um, if I say, hey, I don't believe in Muhammad because, and then I give several reasons, is that hate speech? Yes, that's hate speech. It should be banned. You should be taken to a Muslim land and have your head chopped off. Yes, exactly. And, and you know what's is, ironic, David? What's up? The other day we, we actually showed that the Quran actually agrees that is hate speech because it classifies that as warfare against Allah and his messenger. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. In chapter 9, verse 12, chapter 9, verse 32, chapter 60, verse 2, it classifies as warfare, <clears throat> verbal criticisms of Islam. So if I verbally question Muhammad or say he's a false prophet, that's considered <clears throat> making war against Allah and his messenger. So yeah, that's actually... The Quran does teach it. So the Quran can criticize us. We cannot return the mm -hmm. favor. Because if Muslims have the upper hand, then <clears throat> their religion, their sharia, gives them the right to put us to death. Mm -hmm. But we can defer that to a future topic. Yeah, and so th Let's there's see. just no concept of consistency in Islam, right? When the pagans wouldn't let the Muslims take the pilgrimage to Mecca, this was hateful and intolerant and bigoted, and the pagans <laughs> needed to be fought for this, for, for this, uh, this lack of charity. As soon as yes. the Muslims took over... Hey, now the pagans are no longer to, allowed to take the pilgrimage to Mecca. In fact, no one's allowed to even enter Mecca. So yep. far more intolerant, far more intolerant. Um, Muslims Not will... Not even Jews and Christians, by the way. Yep. Not even Jews and Christians. Yep. Uh, yep. Muslims will say, uh, Muslims will say, oh, look how intolerant the pagans were towards Muhammad when he spent years mocking and ridiculing their gods. And after, after about a decade of this, they uh, became so violent towards him that, that he had to flee. And if I turn around and say, wait a minute, I mean, he was mocking their gods, openly mocking their gods, proclaiming his religion, and he lasted 10 years there, and you consider that horribly, horribly intolerant? Sam, do you think I'd make it 10 years in Mecca today if I went there and started openly mocking the religious beliefs of the people of Mecca? You wouldn't make it for 10 seconds, let alone 10 years. 10 seconds. Once you open your mouth, you're dead. So so it's horrible and intolerant when the pagans do it, but when the Muslims today of Mecca do it, then even though they're doing it far, far, far worse, and they're far, far, far less tolerant, it's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. And you know it's ironic, David? You know this because you mentioned in your debates. We have it in our, in our written material. The pagans actually tried to go out of their way not to attack Muhammad, but find a peaceful resolution. Mm -hmm. They practically begged him. The yep. Muslim sources state that they say, look, if you want to preach Allah, <clears throat> fine and dandy. Preach Allah all day, all night. In fact, it says they actually listened to him when he spoke about Allah. But then they said, for God's sake, stop attacking our family values and our idols and we'll leave you alone. And when he refused to do so, they still didn't attack him. They went to his uncle and begged his uncle, Abu Talib, please tell your nephew to stop mocking our family values and insulting our gods. We don't want any problems. So, man, talk about being tolerant. It was the pagans that tried to be tolerant and find a peaceful solution 
to what they perceived to be unnecessary attacks on their traditions and their gods. Mm -hmm. It was Muhammad who was antagonizing them, not the other way around. And this is not according to Sam Shamoon or David Wood. This is according to your most trusted sources, Muslims. So please explain that. Please explain why any criticism that we level against you is hate speech. But when Muhammad was mocking the beliefs of the people of Mecca, it, it wasn't. And yep. the... the just please, please go ahead and defend that because it will allow everyone to see your hypocrisy and inconsistency. Yep. All right, Sam, we have a, a good comment right here. A good question. Uh, this is following up because, uh, as you know, Anthony and I were doing a series on Allah being a man God and having literal, uh, literal body parts. And so yep. we've pointed out that God can appear. He can in, in Christianity, God can appear. Uh, he can take on a form. Um, he can even become incarnate as he did when uh, Jesus entered the world. Um, so we've pointed that out, but we've pointed out that Allah himself is just by nature uh, embodied. He has a he has literal body parts. And so uh, Luke Cam here, who used some of this information with his Muslim friend, said, uh, I brought up the Allah man God material to a Muslim friend of mine, and he immediately mentioned Isaiah chapter 9 and the vision of God on the throne. Could you please address this? So this is cool. This is, uh, this is, this is someone who's actually using this in his discussions with Muslims. So how would you respond? Yeah, easily. Uh, number one, I think he meant Isaiah 6. That's where you have the vision of Jehovah on the throne, and Isaiah beheld his glory. Because Isaiah 9, this is why I shook my head. I thought they're bringing up the fact that God is born as a child. Yeah. It's Isaiah 9 is the prophecy, yeah. unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So that's why if you saw me react, it wasn't to Luke Cam. I was assuming that they're going to say, oh, yeah, well, your God became a baby. Okay, all right, we do believe that. But no, he's referring to Isaiah chapter 6. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to first read that for the audience, or do you just want me to comment on that? I'll go ahead, and, wanna, uh, yeah? I'll go ahead and read it real quick. I mean, okay, read pull, Isaiah 6. pull up the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah 6, as you turn there, we can look at, just look at Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 5, and then just skip to 8 right away. We don't need to read all of it. Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 5, and verse 8. Let me know when you, when you have it up, because I'll comment on what the Bible does teach about the nature of God and the ability of God to assume various forms of various kinds <clears throat> in order to appear visibly to his creatures, which is different from what the Islamic or the oldest Islamic sources teach, and what even Salafi Islam teaches. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to break that down by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, we invoke the Lord to fill us with the Spirit to do justice to these topics. And I just want to say for the record, and I'm not just saying it in front of David, in my estimation, Anthony Rogers, David Wood, they're the best, and Anthony is an intellectual beast when it comes to Christianity, Islam, and atheism. So, <clears throat> yeah, and, he's and, 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 For the record, I consider myself just really good at making fun of things. Uh, Anthony oh, is an good. Anthony is an intellectual beast. Uh, yeah. Anthony and Sam have like uh, yeah. multi levels <laughs> above me ability to recall information and sources. Um, I, I, I was at, I was at Anthony's house and he has all these books all over his walls and I could pretty much open a book and he could tell me everything about it. Whereas me, I mean, you know, uh, I, I've, yeah. I've read piles of books unless it made some sort of big impact on me or something like this. You ask me like three or four years later, I might have some general idea of what it's about, but. Uh, not the not not to anywhere near the level of recall that, that yeah. Sam and Anthony had like 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 Sam Sam with his recall of uh, uh, basically any article he's ever read once he's laid out his argument that's that is in his head so uh, that's why I have these guys that's why I'm getting these guys on with me to answer questions like this so you want the source and we want to just give God the glory glory to the triumph God glory to the Father Son and Spirit because these are his gifts his graces to be used to glorify him. And we thank Jesus for these gifts. Thank you, Lord, for these gifts, because you are worthy. In Isaiah 6, guys, pay attention. This is what I guess the Muslim was referring to when he said, Jehovah on the throne. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 6, verses 1 to 5, and then verse 8. All right. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. 
And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So he says, My own physical eyes, my own eyes, behold Jehovah visibly. He's seeing him visibly with a shape of some kind that is small enough to fit a throne. So he's seeing a throne and Jehovah in a form of some kind that can actually be seated on that throne. Now read verse 8, and I'll explain. I'll expound our position from Scripture. Verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I, I like said, that part. Here I yeah. am, send me. I'm sorry, that was part of verse 8. I apologize. I was going to say, don't go to 9. Forgive me. Notice it says, God speaking, Whom shall I send, who will go for us? That us part's important. Now maybe a little later, if we have time, or in a future session, we'll unpack the Trinitarian significance of this passage. Oh, we will. Because when you interpret this in light of the New Testament, clearly the one on the throne appearing to <clears throat> to Isaiah, definitely Jesus Christ. But then Paul says that the word spoken to Isaiah here was actually spoken by the Holy Spirit. So the us is used to denote the fact that the entire Godhead is represented there. But again, we may answer that more fully later or in a future session because we do want to talk about Allah worshipping. We'll get to that. But to answer the question, the Bible is quite clear that God by nature is spirit. And I'm going to just throw out the references. We may look at one or two for the sake of time. I'm just going to throw out the references. John 4.24. John 4.24. Jesus Christ Lord speaking about the Father, which would also be true <clears throat> about Christ and the Spirit because this is referring to their deity, their divine nature. He says, for God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. So God is spirit. <clears throat> when he says God is spirit, he's not talking about a spirit like angels are. This is simply the biblical way of saying that God by nature is immaterial. He's incorporeal. He's <clears throat> spaceless, meaning he's non-spatial. If we believe that God created time, space, and matter, as William Lane Craig says, then logically... If he created time, he's timeless. If he created space, he's spaceless. If he created matter, he must be immaterial because he exists before all of these things came into being. And so the, when the Bible says God is spirit, it means that God by nature is incorporeal. He doesn't have a shape or form by nature. He doesn't have a body by nature, a body eternally. <clears throat> and he doesn't need to occupy space or place. And he doesn't exist in time, though we need to be careful here. Once he creates time, he can enter time and interact with time. But by nature, he's timeless. And after the creation of time, he can then interact with time. He can enter into time and space and manifest himself visibly. This is further confirmed by the fact that God is said to be invisible. God is said to be invisible. Like Colossians 1.15, in reference to the Father again, it says, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. The image. And by the way, that would be paradoxical. How can you have an image of someone that's invisible? We can unpack that a little later as well. The image of the invisible God. So the Bible is clear. God, in respect to his deity, his divine essence, his divine existence. And by the way, this would be true of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Jesus as God would also be immaterial, <clears throat> incorporeal, spaceless. With that said, that same God, who doesn't have a shape or a body by nature, because he's the creator of all time, space, and matter, can assume any form, any shape, and he can assume multiple forms and shapes simultaneously and be bound by none of it. That's what the Bible teaches as far as our God is concerned. So yes, our God can assume a visible form. And in that form can be seen seated on a throne. And in that form can actually reach out and touch you by his hand. And the reason why I say that is because that's exactly what God does in Jeremiah chapter 1. We're not going to look at it, but I'm going to give you the reference. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 10. It says that the word of Jehovah came to Jeremiah. Jehovah commissions Jeremiah. And then it says, Je Jeremiah says, and then he reached out his hand and touched my lips, my mouth. And he goes, see, I have put my words in your mouth. So God, who by nature is invisible, who by nature is spaceless, immaterial, incorporeal, can assume any shape, any form that he wants, and he can assume multiple shapes and forms and be bound by none of it. That's what we believe the Bible teaches. 
But then someone might say, well, what about Jesus? I thought Jesus is a man who has a physical body. Yes, because Jesus added a second nature to himself. The nature that Jesus added to his divine person is the nature of humanity. To be human is to have a shape, is to have a body, is to be limited to time, space, and place. So as man, Jesus is bound to time, space, and place and has a physical body. But as God, he transcends all of that. Now I can further elaborate if anyone's confused, but I think that should be sufficient for now. What do you think, David? Yeah, that's good. And, all right. uh, I'm sure we'll be covering topics like this uh, multiple times. Uh, yes. Not in the distant future, but in the near future. Um, and as Andy would have explained, David, that's different with the Salafi belief, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They don't believe what, what we said. They don't believe that Allah assumes a form. He does have a body. Yeah. Just want to make, sure I make that clear. All right. Uh, Joe Leonard over in the uh, chat said, uh, Hi, David and Sam and everyone in the chat from Polish people. Notification bell actually works now. I've complained to YouTube, and I think they did something that is not uh, not blocked since yesterday. So there have been problems with notification bells. In other words, a little bell that you click on uh, to get notifications. Um, there have been problems with it in the past. Not, not on my channel, in, in, in channels in general. So if it's working now, uh, make sure you uh, click on the notification bell. And uh, if you can, click on the like real quick. Uh, th those things all matter to the YouTube algorithm when YouTube decides whether to um, to spread a video or something like this or who to send a vi who to send a video to um, all that matters so smash that like button uh, Sam one more question before yes. we uh, before we actually get to our topic okay every once in a while I think that salmon player must, oh, again? <laughs> okay every again. once in a while I think that salmon player must be some sort of atheist or Christian troll trying to uh, give like the worst possible responses he can give so that he can complete so that he can be completely embarrassed. But I see these comments so often from Muslims. I I, I just think yeah he I think he's sincere and he really thinks that he's got a good argument here. So let let's go ahead and deal with this very quickly. Salmon player says, all so this is at everyone here. All I have proof that if Jesus is God, then he is unjust. Why is that, Salmon player? Well. Christians believe in original sin, so Jesus is unjust because of original sin. It is not fair to punish humanity because of Adam, peace be upon him's sin. Hadiths show no original sin in Islam. So, everyone follow, follow us there. Salmon Player has just declared that if God punishes humanity in general for the sins of Adam... Then yeah. God is unjust. He's immoral. He's wicked. There's something wrong with him. So, Sam, yep. yes. just to take the easy route here. Yes. Does Allah in Islam punish humanity in general for what Adam did? Yeah. You, you know, it's ironic, David. He mm -hmm. even specified the hadith. It's almost as if this was a gift from God for us. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. catch it? Yeah. I would have thought he would say the Quran, right? Yeah. Okay. And either way, you're stuck with the Quran too, as well, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Just, just yeah. so you know, because now we're going to stick with the Hadith, but just so you know, the position in the Quran is that uh, because Adam sinned, he was cast out of paradise into yeah. this world, right? Yes. Paradise is somewhere else. It's not a garden out, out, out with some location on Earth. It's somewhere else. Yeah. And Adam was cast out of that into this world. So being thrown into this world was punishment for Adam's sin. Now, if that's punishment, if being in this world is punishment for Adam's sin, where are we all right now? Where are all of Adam's descendants? We are all in this world, which is not paradise. It's not the garden. We've been, we're all in the place of punishment for Adam's sin. So, so even according to the Quran, even if he had gone oh, yeah. with the Quran, Allah is wicked and immoral and unjust, not fit for worship. According to, not according to us, according to Sam and Player. But Sam, he didn't say Quran. He said he hadiths. Said hadith. And he We're said hadiths oh. show oh. no original sin in Islam. Absolutely none. Zero. How do you respond? Now, now I'm going to have to read several versions of the same narration because each narration brings out a... A more nuanced point. He said hadith. We're going to quote Bukhari, Muslim others. But let me start from the bottom up. And by the way, all this information is available on David's videos and my articles. Please make access of this information. 
Malex Muwata, right? Book 46, number 46.1.1. You can read these all online. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Abu Zinad, from Al Araj, from Abu Huraira. Say those names five times fast, please. That the Messenger of Allah said, Adam and Musa argued, and Adam got the better of Musa. Musa rebuked Adam. You are Adam who led people astray and brought them out of the garden. Adam said to him, You are Musa, to whom Allah gave knowledge of everything and whom he chose above people with his message. He said, yes, you're right, Adam, that's who I am, basically. He said, "Did do you then censor me for a matter which was decreed for me before I was created? Now, notice what Moses said to Adam. Adam, you led us astray, and you got us out of the garden. Exactly what David said the Quran teaches. Okay, now that was Malak's Muwatta. This comes from Mishkat al-Masabi. Mishkat al-Masabi. You don't need a page number. You can read online. Mm -hmm. so, but let me just read the relevant part. This is beautiful. This version is beautiful. Abu Huraira reported that God's messenger told of Adam and Moses holding a disputation in their Lord's presence and of Adam getting the better of Moses in argument. Moses said, you are Adam, whom God created with his hand, and to whom he breathed of his spirit, to whom he made the angels do obeisance, and whom he caused to dwell in his garden. Now, David, pay attention to this version. Then because of your sin, cause mankind to come down to the earth. Let me repeat it again. Then because of your sin, Adam, cause mankind to come down to the earth. So why in the world is Allah punishing mankind, expelling them to the earth because of the sin of Adam? According to Salmon player, that cannot be fair. Now let me just read Sayyid Muslim. Like I said, this hadith is found in multiple versions in various hadith collections. So let me read Sahih Muslim. You ready? This one talks about what will take place on the Day of Judgment when they seek Adam's intercession. Okay? Sahih Muslim, Book 1, Number 380. Sahih Muslim, Book 1, Number 380. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira and Hudhaifa that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah the Blessed and Exalted, would gather people. The believers would stand till the paradise would be brought near them. They would come to Adam and say, guys, pay attention. Our, our father, Adam, Adam, open for us the paradise. He, Adam, would say, what turned you out from the paradise was the sin of your father, Adam. You don't get clearer than that, but let's let's put some icing on the cake. Could, could you repeat that like three times, oh, yeah. Sam, that, okay, what okay. he said? I'll do Okay. Adam supposedly will respond. He says to them, <clears throat> What turned you out from the paradise was the sin of your father, Adam. What turned you out from the paradise was the sin of your father, Adam. I'll do it three because I'm a Trinitarian. What turned you out from the paradise was the sin of your father, Adam. Now, now, now Sam, the, the reason I wanted you to emphasize that is because we have Sam and Player over there responding. At Wood, Allah predestined Adam's action. Adam would later teach this mistake to his offspring. This shows we are here for a test. That hadith shows no original sin. Again, you misinterpreted. Sam, what did he say again? What turned you out from the paradise was the sin of your father, Adam. And then let me reinforce it. Why are you miserable? Why am I miserable? Why is the world miserable? Why do we suffer? Sayyid Bukhari, Volume 6, Book 60. The prophet said, Moses argued with Adam and said to him, Adam, you are the one who got the people out of paradise by your sin and thus made them miserable. So we're suffering misery because of Adam's sin, David. But 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 that's not original sin, according to Sam and Player. Okay, you want to call it original shin? <laughs> Maybe that would be more appropriate, right? 6842 the Quran. Yeah. And by the way, David, we don't just suffer because of Adam's sin. Women end up cheating on their husbands, betraying their husbands because of the sin of Eve. Wait, wait, wait. So, you know Eve, so, so Eve's sin also affected all women after oh, yeah. her? Oh, yeah. But not only that, do you know why your meat spoils, David? Why, why is that? Because of those dirty Jews. You but, sure? By the way, I'm not calling them dirty. I'm just telling you. Let me read. Acor Sandal you're talking Fari. according to the Hadith here. Yeah. All right. Because remember, according to Muhammad, the most vile, the most <clears throat> hateful group are the Jews, and they are the descendants of apes and swine. So I'm just telling you the Muslim attitude, right? Because Jesus is Jewish, his mother. I don't want people to say, oh, Sam called them. No, no, no. I'm just 
using the rhetoric of Muslims. Sahil Bukhari, volume 4, book 55, number 611. 611, watch this one. The Prophet said, were it not for Bani Israel, the children of Israel, meat would not decay. Well, thank you, Mr. Jew. Now, now we got to load our meat with preservatives so it doesn't decay because of you. Mm-hmm. Darn you. And were it not for Eve, no woman would ever betray her husband. Darn you women. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't blame you. Darn you, Eve, for our women cheating on us. We got to blame Eve. So, <laughs> follow up from Sam and Blair. And that still shows no original sin. We are here for a reason. Tell me where you get original sin. Sam and Blair, do you even understand what original sin is? It's Adam's sin, and we all suffer the horrible consequences of Adam's sin. And we have a sin nature because of it. Because we're his descendants in a fallen state. That's exactly what you have in Islam. It is exactly what you have in Islam. Which part of that do you not have in Islam? Adam sinned. The reason we are in a miserable place, according to your sources, is because of Adam's sin, and we all suffer the consequences of his sin. And we have a nature that tends us towards sin, that tends us towards sin, because of what Adam and Eve did. And you're, so, so you're saying Allah is unjust, right? Just, just think about this. I don't know how it can be any more clear than this, Salmon. The punishment for Adam's sin was being cast into this world. Where are we? Why are we not born in paradise until we sin? Yep. Why are we not born in paradise until we sin? Why are we born in this world, which is a place of punishment for Adam's sin? Why are we born here? Well, that's unjust, right? Because we're, we're in the place of punishment according to your own sources. And you don't get it. You just don't get it. You just called Allah unjust. So Allah is unjust. He's immoral. He is not fit to be worshipped according to you. Notice that every time you say anything, you end up condemning your own religion. Now, if, if, if I were you, if I were you, I would just stop. You keep embarrassing your own religion, right? You keep, you keep, you keep making people mock what you're saying. What you what you need to do is go back, read Sam's articles, look what he said on this, and yep. then try to come up with some argument that he can't immediately destroy, right? Because you're making it really easy for someone like Sam. Did, did you see what he just said? He goes, no, in Christianity, you're here because of punishment for Adam. You're being punished for Adam's sin. I thought I just read, David, that the Hadith say, your sin is the reason why we're all miserable on earth. So the misery we experience is because of Adam's sin. I don't know. I mean, that's not punishment. I'm now suffering misery, and people suffer misery, food decay because of the sins of others like Adam or the Jews or Eve. I don't know if that's, if you don't want to call that punishment, but a test, okay. Yeah, yeah Sam, it. Sam, is it not true that, that babies are born with horrible birth defects? Uh, some of them die before they're even born. Um, yes. Some of them, some of them uh, die shortly after birth. Some of them live a couple of years and, and get cancer. Um, yes. if, 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 if they are not, if they are not, part of a just part of a world that was punishment for Adam's sin which is what Islam teaches why do yes. they suffer they're not they, they can't be, they can't be suffering from some sin they committed in the womb or something like that why do they suffer the exactly. the islamic answer is because of Adam yeah. and that's that's exactly what Sam and Player is saying is unjust but he's saying Islam doesn't teach it even though you quoted multiple passages that teach it well he may say well see that's just a test from Allah Allah's testing us because that's what he keeps saying all right uh, look he's made up his mind but glory to Jesus Christ there are other Muslims who are going to hear this and get convicted and are going to realize, you know what? If we have a problem with original sin in Christianity, then we're going to have a, the same problem in Islam. So either we reject both religions. Again, you don't want to be a Christian, fine, but you can't be a Muslim consistently. Mm-hmm. Either give up on all these monotheistic religions and maybe become a Buddhist, right? Or you're going to have to stop attacking Christianity for doctrines found in your own sources if you want to be honest and consistent with your own beliefs. Mm-hmm. So again, we're, our prayer is you come to know Jesus, your only hope of salvation, because apart from Christ, you can't be saved. But if you refuse Christianity because of these arguments, stop being a Muslim. That's it. That would be more consistent of you. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Yeah, so uh, this is just an ongoing problem in Islam that we see from Muslims is that Islam encourages them. And we started off, we were talking about things like tolerance and persecution and 
we showed that Islam has no concept of consistency. It has no concept of saying, hey, here's the rules for the pagans, and here's the rules for ourselves, and they're the same rules. It has no concept of consistency. And we're, that was, you know, with like politics and things like that. But it's the same thing with intellectual issues and argumentation. There's no concept of consistency. There's no concept of, hey, here's the standard I'm applying to you. Here are the arguments I'm applying to criticize your religion. Therefore, I should be willing to have those same arguments and criticisms leveled against my own position. Um, it's either, hey, I, I'm going to criticize your religion, and if you respond, it's hate speech. Or it's, I'm going to criticize your religion, and if you respond and show that exactly what I just condemned was taught by my own God and my own prophet, but I'm just going to stomp my foot and say, it's, it's, we never, we don't believe that. And so it's just, uh, what, again, we'll keep saying this over and over again. What kind of religion requires this, ladies and gentlemen? What kind of religion requires consist inconsistency from top to bottom over and over again? Inconsistency on every issue. Would the God of truth require this level of inconsistency in these kind of defenses to defend it? I don't think so. God forbid. All right. Now, yeah. Sam, do you want... And oh, that's just the Maybe, David, not to cut you up, but in the future, maybe we should do just an entire session on the Quran and Ahadith on the Islamic version of original sin. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know? Yep. No doubt. In the future, by the grace of God, Lord Jesus willing. All right. Well, we're a little over a half hour into the program, and we wanted to get to our topic. Sam, we've been discussing Allah praying. And as we're going to show, this involves worship, if you take these terms seriously. So just give us a, uh, a, quick, a quick summary of what we saw yesterday. Oh, yeah. We do documented and demonstrated by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gets the glory for anything good we do by the power of the Holy Spirit. We demonstrated that the terms <clears throat> salah, salawat, which in every appearance of those terms in the Quran means prayer, is applied, are applied, I should say, to Allah. In fact, they're applied to Allah in context in which he's performing salah or salawat with others. For example, if you go back and listen to the recording, Chapter 33, verse 43, 33, 43, and 33, 56, it says that Allah performs salah with angels. Allah prays for believers as do the angels. And 33, 56, it's even more explicit that he does it with angels because it says Allah and the angels pray, perform salah. We also demonstrated from the usage of the Quran and the hadiths, and what Muslim scholars themselves admitted and stated, such as Qadi Iyad, Ibn Masood, even Ali, albeit indirectly, that the word Salah does not mean blessing, as some Muslims tell us. The word blessing in Arabic is Baraka, nor does it mean Rahma, mercy, because in the Hadith and in some of the narrations that I cited, <clears throat> you find the word Salah used with the word mercy. In fact, it's used in the Quran. In chapter 2, verse 157, it says salawat and rahma, that Allah's salawat, another word for prayer, and his rahma, right, <clears throat> are upon believers, showing that salawat prayer does not mean the same thing as rahma, as mercy. And then in the hadith, we read yesterday, David, that when Muhammad taught the Muslims how to say prayer, salah upon him, and their five daily prayers, there we saw a distinction between Muslims asking Allah to send his salah upon Muhammad and his family, and then immediately asking Allah to send his baraka, blessing upon Muhammad and his family. So baraka there means blessing, and it's used in distinction from the word salah, showing salah cannot mean blessing in these contexts. It must mean prayer, and that's the overwhelming evidence of the Quran, the way the Quran uses these terms, the hadiths, and even Muslim scholars like Qariyat. Now, if you're going to say that none of them know Arabic and you know Arabic, then that means that Allah made a mistake and sending down the Quran to Muhammad, he should have waited for you to come into the world because you know Arabic even more than Allah and his messenger. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what we wanted to look at today is some video clips um, because, Sam, believe it or not, you've gone through... You've pretty much gone through all of the Muslim responses on this, right? Because the uh, the normal Muslim response, if you bring up that Allah prays, would be to try to misdirect you or confuse you. or uh, yep. In fact, the, the normal Muslim response that we've seen over and over and over again, um, long before Muhammad Hijab ever came along, was if you say, hey, the Quran says right here, Allah prays for Muhammad, 
they immediately say, oh, no, 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 it's not two. He doesn't pray to Muhammad. He pray it's four. It's four. We've seen this over and over again over the years. Right. Yes. In fact, you have video yes. clip. I think Manu did it way back on the way back in the day. Yes. When, uh, and, yeah. And, and just to give a shout out, Vocab is here and Anthony's here. Knock them on three top apologists. It was Vocab. And amazing how he found it. I don't know how he found this clip. So God bless him. It's called Google search. Lord Jesus. Huh? It's called <clears throat> Google search, Sam. Well, well, uh, man, I, you know how many videos we got, uh, <laughs> especially over, but he found it and he found the exact clip where we did a show together with the late Nabil Koresh. He was with the Lord. I think that was one of the shows because I, I remember myself what I was wearing. And then in response to Manu, where I even said, I am not saying that when Allah performs Salah, that he's praying to Muhammad. And I even was quite clear. He prays for Muhammad. So my question is, when he prays for Muhammad, who does he pray to? Mm -hmm. So that was even years ago. Yeah. Hey, does everyone does everyone see what I mean when I talk about uh, Sam's brain? He says he he remembers what he what he was wearing like ten years. I don't remember what I was wearing yesterday. Right. So, uh, anyway, um, but we wanted to look at some video clips. Um, now, what sort of what set up this uh, recent trend to discuss Allah praying? Now, people have brought it up before. People have been it, Christian apologists have brought up the issue of Allah praying before. We've done it numerous times in the past. But it became much more popular over the past couple months. And the reason it became much more popular over the past couple months was Muhammad Hijab, um, basically admitting that Allah prays in the debates that we had and Muslims not realizing it, Muslims not realizing it. Um, and then later, as we'll see, he was forced to backtrack and say he never said that. So we're going to look at some video clips. Uh, we're just going to look at three clips, but all of them are, are several minutes long. But pay attention. Don't zone out when we start playing these video clips. Pay attention yeah. to what's being said, because uh, in this first one we're playing, uh, j just so you know, I was going to put together a bunch of clips from the debates um, to show what Muhammad Hijab said and what I said and how we went back and forth. Uh, but I realized I'd already done that for a previous video, so I'm just going to play a couple of clips from that video where I already cool. discussed it. So if you've already watched that video, um, this is going to be some clips from the video I made titled Allah Prays. Now, After that... so. Before you even go to the clip, I just wanted to show you what Salman, a Salman player said. Maybe you want to post it later. Allah praying, oh my God, how many more lies do you have? <laughs> notice, notice everyone, what, what have we been saying here? That we can put source after source, uh, reference after reference, refute objection after objection, and the ultimate response from the Muslims is, oh my goodness, this is so dumb. What, what 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 did we see yesterday? You remember, Sam? That guy was saying, uh, "Huh, any Arabic speaker would laugh at what you're saying right now." And so yeah. we fight. We just stopped. We just stopped everything and said, "Okay, you tell us how would you translate this salah that Allah does?" And we waited. We had to wait several minutes. And when he finished, he said, "Salah equals prayer." But there's still just one God. <laughs> so it's just amazing, right? Uh, again, this is the Muslim response. It's not to actually respond to the arguments. It's not to respond to the evidence. It's to stomp your foot, beat your chest, and claim that the opponent is being stupid. And we're actually going to see this in one of the video clips. Because again, we're going to look at a, a clip I already made, which is a little debate summary. So you can see, and this is the key, Muhammad Hijab admitting that Salah means Dua. And Sam's going to have some interesting information on that. After that, we're going to see, and there, by the way, there are tons of these. We're going to show a clip from Speaker's Corner where Hatun Tash, uh, she's been going around talking to Muslims asking, hey, uh, your God prays, and who does he pray to? And multiple times they admit that Allah prays, and they just then they just avoid the implications, right? Uh, so we'll see that clip, just so you can see what they're doing over there uh, at Speaker's Corner. And then finally, we'll see a clip that I just watched for the first time today because, uh, because uh, Sam had been telling me and Muslims had been using the response. We're going to look at Muhammad Hijab claiming that he didn't say that, he didn't admit that Allah prays. He admitted that Allah prays. Praises, P R A I S E, and we're gonna look. We're gonna we're gonna see the clips now and see if that's that's what he he actually said. And then we'll. So anyway, we, we're gonna look at those three clips. Uh, Sam, anything else before we jump into the clips? My friend, let's just rock and roll. Put those clips so we can decimate these objections and you know silence these lies and distortions of the truth for the glory of Christ. Let's just get into the clips. I'm ready. Let me get rid of Sam and Player's comment here. Hate to do it because Sam and Player is so much fun. 
But uh, all right, so first clip, these are going to be sort of a debate summary in a video that I already did. Again, pay attention because this is going to set the foundation and we are going to see whether we're going to see whether uh, Muhammad Hijab never admitted, actually never admitted that Allah prays. So here we go. Muhammad Hijab and I don't agree on much, but we do agree on this. Allah prays for Muhammad. In my opening statement, I showed that according to the Quran, Allah and his angels pray for Muhammad. Allah prays. People ask, Jesus is God. Why does he pray? I have to remind them that we're Trinitarians. Makes perfect sense for the Son to speak to the Father. Makes much less sense, given the Islamic anything? concept of anything. God, for Allah to pray. In Surah 33, verse 56 of the Quran, we read, Surely Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. O you who believe, pray for him and salute him with a worthy salutation. Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Okay, because I Translators can't hear Translators try to hide this you it. You've seen it. by translating it as right. Allah and his angels what it says. send blessings so that, well, or show I mercy. Let, let me pause this. Sam, we hear everything you're saying. We're, you're live and you keep talking. <laughs> You don't need to see this. This is just a debate summary. You've already seen this. Let me rewind this a little bit and uh, we'll continue. All right. Worthy salutation. Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Translators try to hide this by translating it as Allah and his angels send blessings or show mercy or they praise him. The problem here is that what it says Allah does is salah. And you know what that means. You know there are perfectly good Arabic ways of saying all of those other things. Every Arab speaker in the world knows that Salah means prayer. And it says that Allah does Salah. So, who is Allah praying to? Notice I said that Allah prays for Muhammad. I said it twice very clearly. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Mr. Hijab said that he knew I would bring this up. I've insisted many times in the past that according to the Quran, Allah prays for Muhammad. Mr. Hijab was aware of this, so he was prepared to respond. How did he respond? Well, he claimed that I've made some career-ending blunders. Most significantly, I embarrassingly mistranslated the Arabic. Just as a reminder, what did I say? The Quran claims, Surely Allah and his angels pray for the Prophet. Mr. Hijab was ready for this, so he proceeded to smash my mistranslation. He says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear, speak salah. Come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. According to Mr. Hijab, what did I say? And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. What did I actually say multiple times? Surely Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. So my career is over because I mistranslated the Arabic by translating it the exact same way Mr. Hijab translated it. And he knew that I would bring this up. So this was his prepared refutation. Notice he didn't deny that Allah prays. He denied that Allah prays to Muhammad. But I never said that he did. I said that he prays for Muhammad. And Mr. Hijab admits it. So how does he get around the argument? By lying about what I said and then attacking the words that he made up. And that's why the translators put for, not to the prophet. Just so everyone knows, this is a classic debate trick. You claim that your opponent said something that he didn't say, and then you refute something that he didn't say and claim victory. Since Mr. Hijab studies fallacies in logic, this is called the straw man fallacy.
I went on to point out that even in various hadith collections translated by Muslims, Allah prays. I'll play the clip and put the passages on the screen so you can see what I was quoting. I pointed out that Allah prays, and he said, well, there's a difference in the meaning of the verb here. Well, the Quran says repeatedly that Allah prays, and guess what? He prays in the hadiths as well. And what's interesting is there are even Muslim translators who are acknowledging this and translating these passages as Allah prays. So uh, Aisha Buley, I've got a ton of Islamic books translated by her, respected around the world. From Riyadh as salahin the Messenger of Allah said, Allah and his angels and the people of the heavens and the earth, even the ants in their rocks and the fish, pray for blessings on those who teach people good. So Allah prays. Who is he praying to? Al-Ahadith al-Qudsiyah, by, translated again by a Muslim translator. Hadith number 216, the Israelites said to Musa, does your Lord pray? Musa said, fear Allah, O sons of Israel. Allah said, O Musa, what did your people say? Musa said, O my Lord, you already know. They said, does your Lord pray? Allah said, tell them my prayer for my servants is that my mercy should precede my anger. If it were not so, I would have destroyed them. Allah prays that his mercy will triumph over his wrath. Now, if Allah is praying, what's, he's praying for self-control here, apparently, right? He wants to punish them, but he prays for self-control. This is not me. This is, these are your hadiths and your translators translating these passages as Allah praying. Why? Because that's what Salah means. So even Muslim translators acknowledge that Allah prays. Is this a career-ending mistake for them? No, they're simply saying what the Islamic sources claim about Allah. Mr. Hijab replies by insisting that he already refuted the point. He mentioned again this issue of Salah Ali, Allah, and I've told you the difference. I don't know why I kept repeating it. Did he really refute the point? He agreed with my translation and attacked a straw man. So he's not even attempting to refute what I said. He's trying to trick the audience into thinking that he refuted the point. And it worked. They were cheering for his refutation. And he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> he does go on to say later in his rebuttal that salah comes from a root that refers to connections. But he admits that salah means dua, that's supplication. He says, salah, he said, he actually asked me for something linguistic. He said, what's the linguistic basis that the, the word salah, what, is it, what does it come from? Etymologically, the word salah comes from the word sila. Sila means connection. So it can be any connection. It doesn't necessarily always have to be prayer. And the word actually salah means dua. What does salah mean? And the word actually salah means dua. So Allah prays, he supplicates. That was my entire point. If Allah prays, he's either praying to himself or he's praying to someone else. Either way, Muslims have a problem. That problem was never addressed. Instead, Mr. Hijab, who knew that I would be bringing up this point, accused me of saying something that I never said, then ridiculed me for saying something that I never said, and finally agreed completely with what I actually said. All right, for those of you who want to see the entire video there, you can watch that uh, on my channel. But uh, Sam, this yes, would uh, be a great opportunity because uh, he noticed he said that the word Salah means dua. So we yes. want to discuss that. But a, a quick little comment here from a Muslim. Yes. He says, it is not pray. It oh. is send greetings for Muhammad. Now, now <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen who've been who've been following the chat uh, since yesterday, how many different translations have we seen? Yes, yes. How many different translations have we seen of salah? And now, what's what's the real meaning of salah? Prayer. But Muslims want to translate it translate it as sends blessings, shows mercy towards, praises, and now we have send greetings. Yeah. 
I, that's good you brought it up because another Muslim, Noah, also brought. Let's let's kick. Let's decimate those two objections. The other one was this. Let's do these two, mm-hmm. and we can go into Muhammad Ajab. I'm going to post it. Look what he says here. He says, "The root is sad lamwa, which means to follow or to adhere to closely. So follow, adhere to closely. Now let's, folks, let's take the definition, <laughs> send greetings, and apply it to the verses. Allah and His angels send greetings to Muhammad." And you who believe, also send greetings to him and salute him. Okay. Chapter 33, verse 43. Allah sends greetings upon you, as do his angels. In other words, if the word salah means greetings, when it's used for Allah, then that means the same definition has to apply <clears throat> when it's used of various groups in the very same context. Allah and his angels perform salah. And believers are supposed to follow their example and perform salah for Muhammad. So let's go with it. Allah and his angels send greetings. So from heaven, Allah and his angels saying, Hey Muhammad, how are you doing? You okay down there? We just want to say hi to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. But now, do me a favor, David. Can you go to chapter 9, verse 103? Yep, I'm going to have to pull up the Quran here. Okay, let's go to chapter 9. Again, we're just going to go by their definitions, David. Mm -hmm. Let's see how much sense... You know, <clears throat> does it make sense to render this verb salah the way they propose? Now let's go to chapter 9, verse 103. By the way, it's the same word salah used of Muhammad. Muhammad is now said to perform salah for the believers because his salah, his prayer, is a source of security for them. Chapter 9, verse 103. All right. and, oh, by the way, David, Muhammad Hajab mentioned 9, 103 in your debate. I don't know if you know this. He mentioned it in his response to you. He was doing a response to you. This is where I got confused. In his response, where he's in the background, it's very dark. He raised chapter 9, verse 103 in response to you to show that Salah Allah doesn't mean to. All right, mm-hmm. fine. Go to chapter 9, verse 103. Take alms out of their property. You would cleanse them and purify them thereby and pray for them. Surely... No, 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 no. no, no David. Salah doesn't mean pray. It means sends greetings. Mm-hmm. So it's actually telling Muhammad, when they give you alms, purify them. By sending greetings to them. So greet them. Hey, how you doing, Abdullah? Omar, how are you? Because Allah is telling me to perform salah means to greet you. So I'm greeting every one of you. It's the same verb, David. Mm -hmm. But let's go with the other definition. Let's take the definition of Noah. He said that, I refuted you, David, in a comment section. Let's see what the definition was. Okay, he says that sad lam wa means to follow or adhere to closely. So let's go with that definition. Muhammad... When you perform salah for the believers, what I'm really asking you to do is follow them or get real close to them. So believers, when you give alms, Muhammad is going to follow or get really close to you. Now let's take that definition and apply it to Allah in 3356. Allah and his angels get very close to Muhammad. Or Allah and his angels follow Muhammad closely and you who believe follow him closely as well. There you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you as Muslims could try to make sense of those translations, but, but the real question is, what does any of that really have to do with the word Salah? Yeah. And David, you, even... You, you, th- th- this is what bothers me, Sam. I, again, I, I said it before. You could go up to any Arab speaker in the world and say, what does Salah mean? It means prayer. Okay, well, it yeah. says Allah prays right here. Uh, no, it doesn't. It means all these other things. And, and notice, Sam... Why can't they come up with a consistent definition here? Why does, why do, I go to one Muslim, oh, it means sends blessings. I go to the next Muslim, oh, it means praises. I go to the next Muslim, oh, it means send greetings. I go to the next Muslim, oh, it means you get close to. Why is there this word that doesn't mean anything specific? It just means anything you, you want to say it means. Why is that? Because if they admit that the verb salah does mean pray, even when it's used in reference to their God, they're now stuck. Because the very objection, that they have been hammering Christians with. How can Jesus be God when he prays to God? God prays to God? Now they see the force of that objection if they're going to be consistent because then we can turn it against them. As Trinitarians, you said it yesterday, you said it beautifully and perfectly. We believe in three eternally distinct persons who who exist as one God, and Jesus also became man. As the God-man, He continues the fellowship and communion he enjoyed with the Father in eternity, because prayer also means fellowship. But now as man, he worships the Father as all perfect men are supposed to. 
So we can understand if you have distinct persons praying to one another, and Jesus was also man, worshiping the Father in order to honor the Father as the perfect man, because he's man as God intended man to be. But for the life of us, Allah is not a trinity. Allah is not even a binity. Allah does not exist as a plurality of divine persons. Muslims keep telling us he's a singular consciousness. So then, if Allah does pray and the Quran says he does, now we turn the objection and level it against you. Now we're going to hammer you with your objection. Mm -hmm. Who does Allah pray to when he prays for anyone? So they see the problem if they're going to be honest. So they have to come up with any and every meaning. Now notice, those salah can mean everything and anything, but it cannot mean prayer. So it means everything else but prayer. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam, uh, uh, no notice, notice, Muslims in the comment section. When Muhammad Hijab was asked, what does, what does the word salah mean? What was his response, Sam? He told you that Salah, the, the root of it is dua. In the second rebuttal, he said Salah yeah. actually is dua. That's the root meaning. Yeah, he no, said no. that with his own mouth, right? Yeah, no, the, the, the reason we want that is because uh, uh, do the Muslims here say no, it means sends greetings or uh, no. get close to or something like that? Are, are they saying that Muhammad Hijab is wrong here? That would be very interesting. Yeah. Sam, we wanted to address uh, one quick objection here, sure. um, and then you can go on to explain to us why uh, translating uh, Salah as dua, which <laughs> I would agree with, is actually a problem. Yes. But uh, Daoud keeps pointing this out. He says, Aisha Buley, the very woman you quoted, disagrees with your translation of Surah 3356. Why the inconsistency? Well, my point was, in the Hadiths, even Muslim translators are acknowledging that Allah prays. The point there was, they acknowledge that Allah prays in the Hadiths. So if you go back and watch the clip, it was, here's what the word means if you translate Surah 33, verse 56, literally. And if you're going to say, well, it means something else, then you have to explain why even in the Hadith, Allah prays, and even Muslim translators admit it. So is that inconsistency on my part? No, well, I don't, I don't by the way, I don't believe, even if Aisha Buley wanted to translate it as uh, something else, I don't believe a Muslim, tra an Islamic uh, uh, tra uh, publishing company would let her get away with it. They're not going to let her do it. So she she would have to, if she's if she's coming out with her, the, 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 the uh, notice, the translation of the hadith that I put up on the screen, that's from her website. That's from her website. So if, you know, if, if you're going with some company and they don't want you translating things a certain way uh, because you get in trouble for them, uh, that's the issue. So stick with the actual points. One, what does Salah mean? You know what it means. <laughs> and Aisha Buley, if you walked up to her on the street and said, hey, what does Salah mean? She's not going to say, oh, it means sends blessings. She's not going to say that. She's going to say it means prayer. And then if she wants to defend the point that in verse 33, uh, chapter 33, verse 56, it actually means something else, I'd be open to hearing her explanation. The problem is we're asking Muslims around the world what this means. They all give us completely different answers. Why? Because if you're going to say Salah means something else, you can say anything you want. And so that's why we see so many different translations of this. Uh, but... If you catch them in different places, in the Hadith, for instance, you'll find all kinds of Muslims acknowledging that Allah prays. So, according to Aisha Buley, Allah does, in fact, pray. She acknowledged that with her translation of Riyadh as salihin uh, Now, Sam, yes. let's stick for a moment with our good friend Muhammad Hijab's translation of the word Salah, where it means dua. Yes. Why would this be a problem for a Muslim? Yes. In fact, when he said that, I was praising Jesus because by admitting it means dua, he now is going to have to face the embarrassment of having to explain away how is it that his God worships. Because let me, let me repeat his exact words because I have it in my post, my article. And the word actually, salah, means dua. This is the root word. Those were his exact words to you, David, in the second rebuttal period. The word actually, salah, means dua. This is the root word. Dua means invocation, right? It's to invoke or supplicate. That's what Muslims do. When, when they finish, they, they invoke Allah for something. You, usually you'll see them with their hands open up, right? Hands open up and invoking, performing dua, dua, making their request known to Allah. Now, why is that a problem? Why is that a problem? If salah means dua, and that's what hijab said, why is that a problem? Let me read these narrations attributed to Muhammad. This comes from... <clears throat> Abu Dawood, the book of Dua, and the translation in English 
ironically, this is not my translation, it's a Muslim translation, dua in parentheses, supplications. The book of dua, the book of supplications. An-Numan bin Bashir reported, the Prophet said, dua, supplication, is worship. Let me repeat it again. Wait, dua is worship? That's what Muhammad said, the Prophet of Islam, and, and whom say, they say, swear say, by. Yeah, yes. Sam, the reason I wanted to point this out is because um, in the description for this, let me see if I can scroll down to it. Uh, in the description, I said, tonight at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, David Wood and Sam Shamoon continue showing that Allah prays and worships. And uh, before we actually started, uh, a Muslim responded uh, something like, how is prayer worship? If I say pray for me, I'm not saying to worship me. Uh, completely missing the point that if you are praying for someone, that is simultaneous, simultaneously a kind of worship towards the one you're praying to, right? You're acknowledging him as someone you can pray to. So it's simultaneously prayer for someone and worship. Now, Muhammad Hijab acknowledged that the word Salah, exactly what Allah does in Surah 33, verse 43, and Surah 33, verse 56, the words Allah does his Salah, when I asked Muhammad Hijab, well, what's the word mean? His response was, it means dua. And you're pointing yeah. out that according to Islam, dua is worship. Yep. Not only Islam, David, Muhammad. I mean, this is Muhammad. Here, let me read it again. I'm going to read a couple of them. And Numan bin Bashir reported, the prophet said, not just any Joe Shmo, it's not Qadiyad or Abdullah bin Masood, which you, you can just brush aside. Muhammad, the prophet said, dua and they put in parentheses, supplication is worship. He said it's worship. Now, now this is from Abu Dawood. And you can read these online. And I just posted a link to my article, folks. It's on this blog. It's there. I just posted it, God willing. I really want to encourage you. Go and study these articles because I want you to start quoting them. Don't just watch this. We want you to take this information and use it in your witness until every Muslim bows the knee to Jesus Christ and worships Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So please Use this information. That's what we're doing it. We're not here to entertain you for you just to listen. Use it. Right now, here's another one. Now, this comes from, <clears throat> I, ironically, David, Aisha Buley's translation of Al-Adab Al-Mufrad Al-Bukhari. Ironically, Aisha Buley, her translation, this is Bukhari's book of manners. Al-Adab Al-Mufrad Al-Bukhari. Okay. The excellence of supplication in the Arabic is dua. Watch here, David. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said, nothing is dearer to Allah than supplication. Arabic, dua. Why? The next narration. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said, the noblest act of worship is dua. Supplication. I repeat it again. The noblest act of worship, act of worship, folks, is dua, which he translates as supplication. Again, quoting that same Muslim, and numan ibn Bashir, reported that the Prophet said, supplication, what's the Arabic for supplication? It's dua, folks, is worship. Then he recited, then he quotes a Quranic verse, call on me and I will answer you. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 186. And this one I want to read as well. Well, I'm going to read the next two, David, if you don't mind, because they're sahih. So someone may say, well, these, these are da'if, they're weak, da'if, come on, man. Weak. All right, let me give you sahih. All right, this comes from Sunan Ibn Majah, it is Sahih, sound, number 3828. It was narrated from Numan bin Bashir, that gentleman again, that the Messenger of Allah said, indeed, dua, the supplication, is the worship. Then he recited, and your Lord said, invoke me and I will respond to you. And this one is chapter 40, verse 60, right? Chapter 40, verse 60. Then the final one. Then I'm going to read the comments to this, by the way. This again comes from, <clears throat> let me just get the, the collection, Jami Tirmidhi. Jami Tirmidhi, Sahih, it's sound. Numan bin Bashir narrated that the Prophet said, the supplication is worship, dua is worship. Now, let me read the comments by the Muslim to this translation. Supplication, dua, is worship in itself. Let me repeat it again. Supplication, the word dua, folks, is worship in itself. And for proof, the Prophet recited the verse of Surah Ghafir, call upon me and I will respond to you. Now, I said it was 2186, 
because it sounds close enough to 2186, but here they're actually alluding to chapter 40, verse 60, where if you look at the Arabic, call on me, it's the word dua. So they're saying, on the basis of the Quran, where Allah says, make dua to me, that is worship. Verily those who scorn my worship, ibadah, they will surely enter hell humiliated. This verse shows that not begging his favors is a sign of scorn, as supplication is the essence, the heart of worship. That's what essence means, essence of worship. Without its essence, the supplication is nothing but lifeless utterances. Folks, did you catch it? The word translated supplication is dua. According to 40 verse 60, to perform dua to Allah is to worship Allah. So dua is the essence of worship. So if I invoke, if I supplicate, if I perform dua, I am worshipping. Muhammad Hijab said that the literal meaning of salah is dua. In other words, when Allah performs salah, he's performing dua, dua, I'm sorry, which is worship. So Muhammad Hijab, whether he liked it or not, ended up admitting his God worships. So now the question is, worships who? All right, Sam, a couple comments here. Uh, I, I haven't followed all of the discussion because the chat comes up fast. But uh, Elizabeth Tolan, who elsewhere says uh, that uh, Muhammad is in Hades, so it doesn't sound like she's uh, uh, doesn't sound like she's a Muslim, says Salam plural, Salah singular. In Arabic, where my Situ and Jiddu used to speak, it means peace or greetings or hello. In church setting, means peace. Now I, I, she's apparently con confusing the word Salam with Salah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are those are those are different. Those are completely different yeah. roots and completely different words, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Salam. The, 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 the S L M root, right? Yes. Yeah, it doesn't come from S L W. This is a different root. Salam. That's different. That's peace. But Salah, Salawat. That that's a different root. And I even quoted lexicons, and I quoted Muslim sources, which we can quote again, which Lord willing we may do a little bit, where they admit that Salah, Salawat means glorification. Worship and prayer. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's used consistently throughout the Quran. In fact, here, here's what I want the non-Muslims to do. Challenge a Muslim to cite any place in the Quran besides where it's used of Allah. Put those aside. Put aside 2157, where salawat is applied to Allah. Put that aside. 3343 and 3356, again, where salah, the verb, is used of Allah. Forget those three examples. Ask them to show you any other place in the Quran where the word salah or salawat is used and doesn't mean prayer. Just say, show me one. That doesn't mean prayer. It means blessing or greeting or following or getting close or sending mercy. That's all you need to do. Show me where the, this verb salah or the other form salawat appears in the Quran without the meaning of <clears throat> prayer or worship. Put aside the three cases where it's used of Allah. Let them prove that this is how the word is used in other passages, but conveniently, they'll only tell you that the verb salah and the other word sal uh, salawat, when used of Allah, in those places it has to mean blessing or mercy or greeting or follow closely. Mm. Hey, now look at this. Eliz so Elizabeth Tolan made this comment, and then our Muslim friend said, Elizabeth Tolan, you are correct. So... Apparently, he's trying to confirm this as the, the proper translation. So now we have new translations, apparently, of, uh, of Salah, and, and we just have no clue. No clue. And here, here he goes again. Elizabeth Tolan, she is right. So Elizabeth Tolan is right. Now, why is this, why is this relevant that Elizabeth Tolan is right? Well, uh, our Muslim friends are saying that we need to listen to Elizabeth Tolan. Whatever she says, that's as good as gold. We need yes, to listen right. to her. And she says Muhammad is in Hades. Okay. Now, David, with that said, Elizabeth is right. It doesn't mean prayer. And Muhammad is in Hades. So they have to agree with everything she said. But for the Muslim who said Elizabeth is right, let me just cite a Muslim dictionary. Can I do that? Mm -hmm. This is cited by Under Understanding Islam website. Right? They're quoting, here, I'm going to give the reference, this is in my article, Ibn al-Athir, that doesn't sound like a Christian or a Jewish you know, name, in his highly acknowledged dictionary of the Arabic language. Notice what this Muslim website says, highly acknowledged dictionary of the Arabic language, al-Nihaya fi gharib al-Athar, or Athar, 
has explained Salah as follows. This is this highly acknowledged dictionary of the Arabic language. El Salah and El Salawat used for a particular kind of worship. Its literal origin, agreeing with Muhammad Hajab, by the way, David, look what it says. Its literal origin is supplication, prayer. Sometimes Salah is referred to by mentioning any one or more of its parts. It is also said that the literal origin of the word is to glorify, and the particular worship is called Salah because it entails the glorification of the Lord. So let's go with Elizabeth. Let's forget this Muslim dictionary, a highly acknowledged dictionary. Elizabeth is right that Muhammad is in Hades and that this term basically, you know, means peace like salam, right? And yet let's put aside what this Muslim dictionary says and what other Muslim sources will say as we're about to quote shortly, Lord willing. Hey, ch hey check this out. Our Muslim friend once again says, dua means asking God something, like repenting. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, Sam. So, tr true or false? Surah 33, verse 56, says that Allah does salah. Yes. Okay. Uh, true or false? Muhammad Hijab said that salah means dua. Yep. He just said that. Even this dictionary said it. All right. And according to our Muslim friend here, dua means asking God something like repenting. So... So, if, so, so uh, it's, it, uh, I just mean true or false. He, this is what he's saying. Yes. So if we put all of these together, Allah is asking God something like repenting. Yes. So Allah is asking God something. So he's either asking himself or he's asking someone else. That's right. exactly our argument. So he just made our argument for us. May the Lord Jesus bring this man out of the darkness of Islam into the glorious light of the gospel of the son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, man, hopefully you get saved. Thank you. Just made our point for us. Wow. All right. Yeah, so sure. should we look at another clip? All right. Of course. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead let's, and look at, look let, at another let's clip. Let's estimate the objections once and for all so we don't hear these objections anymore and equip the saints to silence these objections. Let's do it. Let's just completely yeah. decimate by the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, again, uh, there, there are a bunch of these over at DCCI. DCCI stands for Defend Christ, Critique Islam. Uh, for those of you who aren't subscribed to the channel, you want to be. So uh, someone could put the link to the channel over there in the, the comments section over in the chat uh, so people can click on it. But um, there are a bunch of recent videos where they go up and ask Muslims, uh, hey, why does your God uh, pray? Who's, he, who's the hearer of his prayers? Things like that. And uh, Hatun Tash is doing it. Um, Daniel's doing it. So they're going around asking Muslims this. And uh, Muslims are admitting some, some very interesting things. And all I did was click on the, 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 the shortest one I could find. So, so there are many more, and there are, there are longer ones. I clicked on a, on a short one, which is Hatun um, asking a Muslim, uh, about Allah's prayers and notice the Muslims just going to say uh, we've already refuted this we've already dealt with this and then she says okay well, well tell me what the refutation is and then it's oh I don't want to talk to you and so uh, I, I, guys I, I if this if this is really so easy to answer I don't know why we're not getting any clear answer so here we have Allah praying the uh, second clip we're watching <laughs> Me for, Sir, uh, when you say pole dancing, I couldn't help. But Sir, <laughs> in Surah 33, verse 56, <laughs> no, no, Allah good, does good, pray no. with yeah. his yeah. angels oh, upon, 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 upon Muhammad. <laughs> so, who does Allah pray to? So, have you done your homework? Who does Allah pray to? Finally, you might be the one who enlightens me. Do you know Allah prays? On so us as well. So Allah prays on uh, mankind. On. It says on. Really pray on. So Allah prays yeah, on yeah, mankind. So who, does on? who does Allah pray to? Who is the hero of the Allah prayers? Does it say two or one? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so Allah prays upon Muhammad with his angels. Yes, okay. Who does? Who and does? I'm not talking. Yeah, I'm not talking about that one. I'm, why not us? I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk about that one as well. So who does? Who? Who is the hero of Allah? Allah's prayer. If you are not going to Who is them, the hero of Allah's prayer? Listen, listen, listen. listen. I work out. Listen. The same way God 
praise upon Muhammad. Also, there is verses say here, God praise upon us as well. That's Surah 33, verse 43. Is that that one? Now, yes. Okay. So we are no different than Muhammad in this regard. Yeah. So, it, so are you getting it? So I understood. Okay. You are confirming Allah praise upon Muhammad and all Muhammad. Yeah. And not all only, mankind. Not only all Muhammad. mankind. All the And then also, yeah. And then also, you do. Ha you have hadith. Allah praise for those who teach the good things. Okay. So we are agreeing. On. Praise Just, on. So we are, we are agreeing that he does pray. So the question is, who does Allah pray to? to? You bring it all the time. Yeah, answer, Nothing new. answer. So I move on. You have been answered. We are about to answer the another we three years. Just answer the question. Listen, we have given you the answer many times. What is you the answer? You take it or leave it. So what is the answer? Who is the hero of Allah prayer? What does it mean? Allah praying. Don't play that junk with me. Answer me. So, who, you know the who is the hero of Allah's prayer? Look, does Allah pray in the way that we are praying that we need hero for our prayers? Does it work like this? Is this your understanding of it? Sir. Answer me. Sir, yes. since Allah is man God, therefore I, am asking the, therefore I am asking the question, who is more powerful than Allah, that Allah is praying to someone for his people and for Muhammad and for those who does the good. So, who is the peer, hero of Allah's prayer? Miss <laughs> 15. The one that you heard before. And who is that? According Go last on, week, last week someone told me Allah prays to Muhammad, and then week of, uh, again someone told me Allah prays to mankind. So which one do you go? Uh, does Allah pray to Muhammad? Am I free to speak to you or I must speak to you? Oh, this is speaker's corner. So you have got freedom of speech to speak to me or not? I, and you are choosing to not speak? Hatun, Hatun, you are a nice person, you believe in God. In I'm Jesus. Christian, I'm not nice person, I'm a sinner are, who needs okay. Christ. So, okay. who does Allah pray to? You are a evil person, you are a sinner, yeah? You are a sinner. Who Hatun, does Allah pray listen, to? Listen, now let me speak. You are a sinner, you are a bad person. I'm not interested to speak to sinners and bad people. Okay. Can you respect this? Yeah. So, what we have is here, Islamic Dawatim doesn't want to answer the question, Shame on Islamic Dawah, it's been week after week, and they still have no answer. Who does Allah pray to? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, everyone. I muted myself there. No, I could hear you. Huh? You could hear me because you're listening oh. to me over Skype. I muted myself. Oh. I muted myself because uh, uh, I don't want any feedback while we're playing a video clip. Um, then I forgot to put me on. Uh, so notice what, uh, what she said there. Um, she brings up the issue. Allah prays. And the Muslim admitted it repeatedly. He admitted that Allah prays. Um, so she's asking who's the hearer of his prayers. Who's he praying to? And his response is, well, we, we've already answered that. We, 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 come on, how many times have we got to answer that? And she, her response is, well, well, just give me the answer. Just give me the answer. And it's, well, uh, if, I'm, if I'm free to not speak to you, then I'm leaving. Now, this is amazing because this is, this is the Dawa team there. If, if they have a good answer for that, no, notice, why, Sam, why can't we get one good answer for it, right? If, there's, if, there's, if it's so easy to answer, why can't we get one good answer from anyone? We get a bunch of answers. We get a bunch of answers that are complete nonsense. And the, the, the mentality here is if we can give you a lot of different answers and a lot of different translations, all of which are false, they somehow add up to a good refutation. Yeah. And they're hoping a silly least, response. They're hoping that at least one of the answers will stick and sound logical enough to get people off their back and stop mentioning this yeah. this objection. Th th right? this, is, this is called the kitchen sink approach, right? Where you throw everything but the kitchen sink and you see what sticks, right? You see, you see what actually works. Uh, and by the way, look how look how we have uh, Muslim over here. Uh, if you're under 18, go ahead and turn away from this. 
turn away from the screen for a moment. Um, this is how this is the level of the the responses we get. Hatun is an idiot. She can suck my sensor. Oh man, Are you kidding me? And just so you know, Noah, that is permanent blockable offense. And so, uh, oh, uh, someone else, please uh, block Noah there. And yeah, uh, if it. not, then I'll go ahead and find it. But uh, notice, you're not just giving him a timeout. That is uh, again permanent He's blocking fine, yeah. from from the channel. Oh, here we go. He's still over here. Whoa! No one had blocked him yet. My goodness. Let me someone block here. him, please. Hi, Admin. user on this channel. All right, we'll yeah. see if that function works. Yeah. And by the way, DCCI is here. I yeah, don't know no. if that's good. I don't know that, sir, but that's DCCI. So anyway, welcome. Uh, you know, this may God prosper and bless you and use you for the glory of Jesus. Anyway, yeah, so no one's going to answer that question. I mean, because <clears throat> you're going to have to say that Allah's praying to himself or he's praying to someone else. Mm -hmm. And if he's praying to himself, what sense does it make for a unipersonal being to be praying to himself for what reason what purpose but if he's mm -hmm. praying to someone else then you admit allah is not the only god or not the only person who is god you see the problem mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so uh, what uh, anyone uh, tells me by the way he goes ibn al disagrees with my explanation of 3356 who cares i'm going by the definition that he gave in his dictionary so if he wants to be inconsistent that's his problem mm -hmm. even though he's, he's dead yeah anyway um, all right. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, since, uh, since DCCI is here over in the, uh, comments, um, over in the chat, um, and, uh, someone could post a link to the channel again, uh, guys, again, at the very least, you'll want to subscribe to the channel, especially on this topic. You can go through the recent videos where over and over again, they're going up to Muslims, uh, getting confirmation that Allah prays and always failing to get any serious response from the Muslims, uh, but not just on this issue, on tons of tons of different issues, and it's in a more of a public uh, context. So uh, awesome material there. Also, uh, if you can, if you can, uh, be sure when you go over to their page to support them financially, if you can, right? Because these are people who are actually going out, constantly interacting with Muslims. Uh, I know from experience, financial support helps. That allows you to focus more on what you're doing. In fact, I'll go ahead and say it here. If you financially support me, so if you contribute to me each month, uh, you might want to think about going and supporting them instead, right? I'm, I'm saying that, right? They're, they're, they're doing awesome work. So if you're like, no, I mean, uh, 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 budget's tight, but I support you, David, every month. I know there are people out there who have awesome jobs and can support multiple people. If you're not like that, you can only support one person or something like that. that that's that's awesome. But you might want to uh, go check out their page. And I have no objections to you saying, David, I'm going to support them. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give my monthly support to them instead of you because uh, they're doing awesome, awesome work. And you can see these are some some warriors, uh, especially especially Hatun. Hatun will be standing in the middle of. 30 or 40 uh, Muslims um, and just taking all of them on. So, so it's really awesome stuff. Now, David, here's what's what's killer. We got two Muslims who are pretty much ignoring everything we're saying. For example, this MMD Aliman says, Salah means different things in different contexts. Okay. And then you had someone else, Dawood 21 says, you quote authorities who disagree with you. All right. Number one, <clears throat> I guess Dawood 21 didn't hear that Muhammad Hijab admitted, Dawud 21, pay attention and respond. Muhammad Hijab admitted that the literal meaning of Salah is dua. Mm -hmm. So that means he agrees with me. Number two, you just had Muslims <clears throat> that David just played admitting to Hatun that Allah prays. That's number two. <clears throat> number three, the third thing. We even showed examples where Muslim scholars, you may have not been here yesterday, but Muslim scholars, quoting your prophet, that admitted that Salah does not mean the same thing as Barakah, meaning blessing, and it doesn't mean the same thing as Rahmah, meaning mercy. So then that means you can't tell me that Salah means blessing or it means mercy. What does it mean? And in response to MMD, I understand that certain words can have different meanings in different contexts. But here are my two challenges to you, and please answer honestly. Here are my two challenges. Number one, can you show me a place in the entire Quran where the word salah or salawat, either one, besides the places where they're applied to Allah, put those examples aside, where salah or salawat 
does not mean prayer, does not mean worship. Just cite one example, because you just said salah can mean different things in different contexts. So my challenge should be easy, because you said even a child who knows Arabic knows this. A child who's Arabian would know it's so obvious to them. That's what he says. Okay, here's my challenge. School me. Show that I'm not a child, I'm an infant, right? I'm still in diapers. School me. Show me an example in the Quran where salah, and I'm even going to extend it to salawat to make it easier for you, where the Quran uses either one of those terms in a context where it cannot mean pray or prayer. Please refute me, which leads me to the second point. Since the verses that we alluded to, specifically chapter 33, verse 43, and 3356 depicts Allah as performing salah with others. For example, I want to be clear here. 3356, it says Allah and the angels perform salah. Whatever definition you give to salah, it has to have the same definition. It has to mean the same thing consistently when you're defining it in reference to Allah and the angels because it says Allah and the angels are doing it. So if you're going to tell me that salah in reference salah means sends blessings, then consistency demands that you also translate it the same way when it's applied to the angels in the same context and the same sentence. So that means you're going to have to render the verse as Allah and the angels send blessings to Muhammad, which then would invite the question, how do angels send blessings down to Muhammad? Your response, if it's honest, would be by asking Allah to bless Muhammad. Well then, the same definition would apply to Allah. If angels send blessings by asking Allah, and Allah is performing that act with angels, that means Allah and the angels are asking Allah to send blessings. So we're back to square one. Do you guys finally get it? Yep. Uh, all right. Hey, I, I did have to. Uh, I did have to include a comment over here from Ben Wagoner in the super ben chat. Wagner. Just because this is uh, this is pretty awesome here. He says, uh, David and Sam, here's a new theme song for you from Manfred Mangod. Now, he's referring here to Manfred Mann, who uh, did the song uh, Do a Diddy Diddy Dum Diddy Do. I think Blinded by the Light as well. Blinded by the Light. Anyway, um, so but he calls it Manfred Mangod because we refer to Allah as a man god because he has literal body parts. Uh, but he came up with his new song, There Allah Was, just walking down the street singing Dua, diddy, diddy, dum, diddy, do. Get it? Dua? Get it, Sam? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm listening. I want to laugh at what he said, but I want to cry because of what Dawood said. Oh, the uh, word and in Arabic, the conjunction. Uh, what do you, uh, I'm listening, man, but this guy, I'm about to give off my sir. And in Arabic doesn't always mean a conjunction. Oh, really? Dawood 21. I'm getting tired of answering your silliness and nonsense. Show us contextually that the word wa and is not a conjunction joining Allah and the angels together. I know Shamsi, right, try to argue that Allah does this and the angels do something else, though it's using the same verb. Prove your assertion. Don't simply beg the question. What in the verse shows that the conjunction and isn't joining Allah and the angels together in performing the acts of Allah? Please prove it. Stop assuming it. Yeah. Sorry, David. I mean, I, when I saw it, I was laughing, but this guy's making me cry now. So I don't know. Should I laugh or cry? Yeah, this is, uh, it, you, you do. I mean, it takes a special kind of, uh, patience to continue interacting with people. Um, over and over again, even when, again, we, we've said this before, like, it's like talking to a wall, right? Um, yep. So, yep, it is. Yeah. yeah. So now we have, uh, ah. now we have and there. <laughs> Doesn't mean a conjunction. Oh my goodness. This is yeah. awesome stuff. And notice, why are they saying things that are just absolutely ridiculous? I mean, who's going to say that and there, a lot in the angels, isn't a conjunction. What, what, I mean, tell me anything that could possibly be there. Um, yeah. And a lot for the angels, a lot to yeah. the angel. What, 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 how would you translate that? Yeah. The reason why they're doing that is because remember you cited Halali Khan yesterday. Uh -huh. And if I recall, Halali Khan, yeah, they he actually act separated it. Yeah. Yes. And so you notice again, the dishonesty and the desperation of these Muslims. And Shamsi, from what I know, again, I don't follow him, I've seen him, but from what I know, he too is a Salafi. 
And so he would <coughs> cite this particular translation of the Quran because it's a Salafi translation. Mm -hmm. This the Halali Khan translation, and I don't know if you could even put it up on the screen, yep. but it's in my estimation, yeah, if you want to put it up so you can yeah. see. Halali Khan? Yeah, Halali Khan, because they're the ones Got it. Boom. who so dishonestly butcher the Arabic and English, because if you didn't know a little bit about the Arabic or have access to you know those who break down the Arabic accurately, you would think that in this passage, Allah is performing this act separately from the angels who are performing a different act who then are separated from the believers who are performing a similar act to the angels, but it's not the same action carried out by Allah. What do I mean? There it is on the screen, folks. Look at it. It says, Allah sends his salat on the prophet and also his angels. What a dishonest perversion of the Arabic. The Arabic doesn't say that. It says, Allah and his angels perform salah. But notice they had to separate Allah from the angels in order to obscure the fact that Allah is joining a group and carrying out the same action that this group is performing. Talk about dishonesty. I mean, what level will you stoop? To, to what extent will you go to try to pervert what your own sacred text says? Now, this is supposedly the uncreated eternal speech of Allah that you believe is holy. And there is no sacred scripture that can even come close to your Quran. And this is how you treat your Quran? This is how you treat the Arabic of the Quran? This is what you do to it? You, you pervert it in such a dishonest manner in order to mislead people into seeing that in the Arabic, Allah and the angels are performing the same action, but that's too much for you. So you have to separate Allah from performing salah and the angels who carry the same act in union with Allah to obscure the fact to the non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. Sam, n notice this is a... Uh, this is also a response to Daoud 21, who kept saying, oh, well, if you accept Aisha, I mean, uh, Aisha Buley's translation over here, why don't you accept it over there? Notice, if you quote anyone on, on, on anything, then you have to accept everything they ever said or every translation they've ever given, right? In other words, if you accept them, if you accept what they say on anything, you accept them as an absolute authority. As if this is how Muslims approach the Bible, right? If they, if they quote any verse of the Bible, they then accept every other verse of the Bible. Uh, yep. Daoud 21 doesn't do that, and it never occurred to him to do that, and he doesn't understand the point, right? So we quote the Hillel Khan ver edition of the Quran all the time, yep. right? We like the Hillel uh, Khan because sometimes it doesn't water things down, right? Like uh, Surah 98, verse 6, which calls Jews and Christians the worst of creatures, right? So we'll quote it there. But notice, then someone like Daoud 21 will say, aha, well, if you do that, then you have to accept the translation of Surah 33, 56. Well, not if the, not if the translation of Surah 33 verse 56 is not accurate, right? Exactly. So I, I don't. It's a ridiculous principle that no Muslim apologist has ever followed, that no Muslim has ever followed. And then he will say, "This is the principle. If you quote someone on something, then you accept all of their all of their ideas on everything." Absolutely yes. ridiculous. Once again, completely consistent. He has just called all of his apologists and every Muslim on the planet an inconsistent hypocrite in their yes. methodology. What, what's, what's our methodology? Well, uh, on issues like this, um, it's, it's actually a version of the principle of embarrassment, right? Um, so you could apply this historically. You could say, hey, when people historic, and by the way, this is a principle that historians use. It's a principle that you, it's used in court, in court settings, right? If you say, hey, did you rob that woman, right? You're on the stand, you're, you're on trial for robbing a woman. And you're asked on the stand, hey, did you rob that woman? And your response is, no, I was selling crack to kids right over there. They might actually believe you because you're not saying, no, I was at the bingo parlor helping little old ladies play bingo, right? You're not saying something good about yourself. You're saying, that makes, you're saying something that embarrasses you, right? That they could go then charge you for selling crack to kids, right? You're saying something embarrassing. So if you're acknowledging something embarrassing that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make it weaker, it makes people believe you more because... If you're lying, you're going to lie to make yourself look good. You're going to lie to help yourself, right? And you could apply the same, uh, the same principle with uh, translations. Right? Yep. When, a yep. Muslim, when a Muslim translates Surah 33, verse 56 as sends blessings or shows mercy towards or uh, praises or greets, um, are we bound to accept that? And the answer is no. Why? Because we can look up the word and we know exactly what it means. And all of these people who are contradicting each other, very difficult to take them seriously, right? So we understand why a Muslim would want to mistranslate that passage. We understand why.
right? Yes. You want to avoid the implication that your God prays, right? So we understand. We understand the motivation behind mistranslating it. And when you have a situation where it's in your benefit, it's to your advantage to mistranslate a passage, no, we don't have to accept your translation. We're going to go look. We're, we're going to look up the word. We, we're going to ask people. We're going to be very clear on it, right? If yeah, in a know. different setting, if in a different setting, a, a, a devout Muslim is translating a passage and then acknowledges that Allah prays, notice there it's the principle of embarrassment. Is she mistranslating this? Well, why would she mistranslate it in a way that is embarrassing and makes Allah uh, a, a, someone who prays, right? So yeah. there we have reason to accept it. Notice, what are we doing? We're applying basic criteria, basic principles, the same principles that are used in, in, uh, in history, the same principles that are used in courts of law that... Sometimes people have it to, and it, it's to their advantage to lie or to make things up. In those situations, you need to proceed with caution and be very careful. Other situations, people admit things that they wouldn't, they would never make them up, right? Aisha Buley would not say, you know, this, this word really means sends greetings or something, but I'm going to translate it as pray. Allah prays. She's not going to do that. She's a Muslim. She's a Muslim. She's not going to deliberately mistranslate something in order to give herself a disadvantage. You would only miss you would only mistranslate something deliberately in order to give yourself an advantage. And so I understand why Muslims do that with Surah 33 verse 56. It's surprising. It's surprising when they acknowledge elsewhere that Allah prays. So hope that helps, Daoud. I know it won't. I know it won't because I've been talking to you too long over here. But uh, we, I'm sure it will help the other people who are actually uh, paying more attention. Let me just real quickly address two things. One by the gentleman again, I forget his name, Aliman. Guess what example he cites to demonstrate that Salah does not mean prayer. This is why, again, I'm telling you, man, really, we need the grace of Jesus Christ to be patient and pray for them because mm -hmm. the blindness is really shocking. You know what verse he quotes to try to convince us that Salah doesn't mean prayer, David? What? You know what verse he quoted? Chapter 9, verse 103. Now, didn't, the you, one... didn't you just address that? Yes. <laughs> he just said, here it is. It's 903 is the example I gave yeah, you. I still, have it. I still have it pulled up from when you brought it up. Yeah. He just said 9103 is an example where the word Salah doesn't mean pray. Can you read it one more time? Chapter 9, verse 103. All right. <laughs> one more time. Here we go. Take yes, alms out of their property. You would cleanse them and purify them thereby and pray for them. Surely your prayer is a relief to them. According to him, this is an example where Salah doesn't mean prayer. That's what he just said. <laughs> What's it mean? <laughs> it means, uh, yeah, again, again, Sam, you, you'd have to say, take alms out of their property, you would cleanse them and purify them thereby, and what, greet them? Yeah, greet them, get close to them, follow them, you know. Uh, look, I've got, I've got Pikthal, Shakir, and Yusuf Ali here, all of them translated as pray. Yeah, because it is obvious that the Quran is invoking or exhorting Muhammad to pray. In other words, he's functioning as a mediator, as an intercessor, who prays to Allah on behalf of his community, which is a topic for a future a future live stream, that Muhammad is actually the middleman. He's the real savior, intercessor, because that's another myth that you often hear. There is no mediator, no middleman in Islam. That's a bold-faced lie. In Islam, Muhammad is the intercessor, the mediator, and the savior, without whom no Muslim will ever be saved, and no Muslim can ever approach Allah. But Lord willing, we'll defer that by the grace of Christ for a future discussion. Here, it's not about Muhammad praying to Allah to have mercy on his community, and it's Allah telling him to do that. He cites that as an example that Salah doesn't mean prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. okay. All right, should we look at our uh, last video clip yes, where Hatun Tash is going to confront Muhammad Hijab himself? Now, Sam, did we see, did we see repeatedly that when I brought up Allah praying, and I said, Allah prays, Muhammad Hijab's response was, and he says, Allah prays to Muhammad. It's not two, it's four, right? So he yeah. used the word praise, right? He understood what I was saying. He used my yeah. word, and he didn't object to the word I used. He objected to a word I didn't use. He, he, he objected to two, which I didn't say, and he said it's really four. Yes. We got 100%. that, right? Yeah. All right, because he's going to say he never used the word praise. And uh, then when Hatun actually has it pulled up on her phone to show him, uh, he, 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 
for, for the entire time. And by the way, uh, the, the actual video is like 20 or 22 minutes long. Uh, so we don't want to watch that. I cut out some parts of it. You can go to uh, DCCI's uh, website. In fact, I'll post it in the uh, comment section here, the full, the full video. People want to watch the full video. But basically, the entire video is, is him saying that he never, he never used the word pray. Um, and, what he, and then he attacks Hatun's English. And he, the reason we're pointing this out is he's using the exact same method. But he's using it against Hatun, right? But with me, he's saying, ha ha, he doesn't know Arabic, ladies and gentlemen. It's not two, it's four. And so I, I certainly wasn't confused about the difference between two and four. I said four. Um, but he said, ah, you don't know Arabic. Let me give you the correct translation and so on. We all saw that. But he's going to do the same thing with Hatun. He's going to say, ha, she doesn't know English very well. She doesn't understand the difference between praise, P-R-A-Y-S, and praise, P-R-A-I-S-E. She doesn't understand the difference, you see. But it's obvious to anyone who watched that clip in the debate that he said, ah, so David says he prays to Muhammad. It's not two, it's four. So it, it's obvious what he was saying there, right? But instead of actually addressing that point, he goes to another part of the debate where he's talking about something and he starts talking about praising uh, Muslims, uh, you know, praise and send praises and blessings on on Muhammad or something like that. And he starts saying, aha, there I said praise, praise. It's not P-R-A-Y-S, it's praise, P-R-A-I-S-E. And this is just amazing, ladies and gentlemen, because notice, I brought up the point in the debate that Allah prays. He only responded to it by saying, I don't know Arabic, and then saying that I said something that I didn't say. And then basically bragging that he had, he had refuted the point, which he never actually really seriously addressed. Then when Hatsun goes to him and brings this point up, he says, well, he never said pray. He actually, uh, what he said was praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, which notice that wouldn't even make any sense, right? If it was, David says, Allah prays to Muhammad. It's not to, it's for. Notice P-R-A-I-S-E wouldn't make any sense there, right? Because you don't say, hey, I praise to God. You say, I praise God. Right? You say, I pray to when you're using the word P-R-A-Y. It doesn't make any sense if you're using P-R-A-I-S-E. That just, you, you just say, I praise God. I praise this person for the work that he's done. I praise, you don't say, I praise to or I praise for. So the fact that he's using two and four shows that he understands what he's been saying. But he's, he's, he's gotten some flack about that. It's being used against him. And so he just has to change his story and say, ah, I didn't, I, I didn't mean pray. I didn't mean P-R-A-Y. I meant P-R-A-I-S-E. So let's go ahead and watch this clip and here once it, you'll see what a warrior uh, hatun tash is as she uh, stands in the middle of the people and by the way notice that the crowd reaction is exactly the same whether you're in the uk or whether in the you're in the us um you'll have a muslim speaker and it doesn't matter what he's saying he can be flat out lying and the crowd will simply cheer for it and act like it's a decisive refutation this is this is the religion that we're being told is the religion of truth so let's go ahead and Take a look at this. Now the word Salah. Yes? Is that what you're going to go, uh, take us to next? Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. No, please. Yeah, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's do this. Yeah. Hijab, don't make her embarrassed again. No. Have, have, no, 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 have no. mercy on her. No, no, please. Have please. mercy on her. Please. I want to know because this is something. Sir? So, oh, hold on. I'm going to answer my question. I'm going to ask yes. my question yes. third time. Yes. How Sorry. many times does Allah pray for Muhammad? Uh, 50 no, times? No. Or, 50 times he never for Muhammad. Five, he never uh, prays for Muhammad. Now, let me explain. Okay, thank you very much. He never prays for Muhammad. Let me explain. Would you like me to explain or not? He doesn't pray for Muhammad. Would you like me to explain or not? That's yes or no. Would you like me to explain or not? That's yes or no. Does he pray for Muhammad or not? Yeah. Does he pray for Muhammad or not? He does not pray for Muhammad. He doesn't pray for Muhammad. Okay? Now, let me... Can you just apologize to us again? Yes. For publicly you confirm that Allah prays for Muhammad with angels? I will apologize on one condition. That you show me exactly where in the debate that I said pray. Go ahead. Get it. I want to see why I said the word pray. It says Allah says uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi and he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put four. 
not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear, speak salah. This, come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. And if you didn't, you must apologize. And so must all of your Christian friends. And repent. Go, go ahead. Repent. Because repent. if you look at... Water. No, hold on. Let me tell everyone where to look. Go to minute 58 of the debate. You will find, if you go to minute 58 of the debate, I said salah. I did not use the word pray in English. I said salah for salah too. I did not use the word pray. In fact, in an in, in, in hour, one hour and three minutes of the debate. Look at this time because you'll find that I actually translated it as blessings. So if you want to disregard what I said in the debate so that you can miss it, because the only way you can beat me is if you lie about me now. Yes. That's the only way forward for you and, and the you, Christian and team. That, I want to know where I said the word pray in the debate. If I said the word pray, I will apologize. Yeah, Everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's here, guys. I know what I said. Let, Hatun, Hatun. Let Hatun. it I know, confirm. I yes. It is Hatun. actually not Hatun. Allah Hatun. pray to. Hatun. It is Allah yes. pray yes. for. Yes. So, Hatun. because Hatun. Allah Hatun. pray Hatun. for Hatun. Muhammad, Hatun. with the angels, Hatun. my question Hatun. to you is, Hatun. who Hatun. is the zero of Allah pray? Ladies and gentlemen, I have the answer. I said no, no, no. Listen from the 15 minutes. So, Excuse me, he's been wondering here, he's been wondering here, he does not respect the Muslims, therefore he does, he does not get my respect. So, Hatu, 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 please, I know, no, I know what you're talking about. Yes, yes, I know, I know, wait, I know what you're saying. No, you don't. No, no. Yes, no. Yes, yes, no. Yes. So, Hatu. you expressed for us that Allah prays for Muhammad. Allah and angels pray for Muhammad. Thank you. So Hatun, my you question like to is to you, Hatun. how many times yes. does yes. Okay. Allah pray? Thank you. 50 times yeah. or 5 right. times? Okay. Who yes. is yes. the I know key the of Allah's now. prayer? Yes, thank you. I'll answer the question. You have to give me time now. Now, the word I used, one hour, two minutes and 39 seconds into the debate, was in fact praise. Wait a minute, what did you say? Wait, hold on. Shh. It's praise. P-R-I-P-R-A-I-S-E. Not P R A Y. Don't play that. Don't play that. Muhammad and blessings. Don't lie. And blessings. Don't play that junk for me. I'm talking in your debate from the 50 minutes where you are confirming that Allah prays for Muhammad. My question still stands. How many times does Allah pray for Muhammad? Does he pray 50 times or 5 times? Who is the hero of Allah's Prayer. That is very simple question. I, so, I okay. answer your question. I think, well, I think you need to, you need to hide behind this now. It's gonna cover. No, it's probably it's been hiding to cover no, your with, shit. With, hold on, hold Don't play on. that junk with me. Don't play that junk with me. Shut up, Jen. How many times does Allah pray? Yes, I am. How many times does Allah pray? Okay. For Muhammad, you. You. with the angels, with the angels. alongside okay, of angels, All right. yes, five yes. times or fifty or times. Or 50 Who okay. is the hero of Allah's prayer? Okay, okay, thank you. The answer is this: with David Wood, it was a problem of the Arabic language. With Hatun, it's the problem with the English language. Yes. Because as a yes. praise, yes. praise I and blessings you. cannot mean praise. Oh. It's P R A I S E. Oh, now. This is a problem with language. You're hearing something, but you can't see how it's spelt. Now, that, now, don't come to me if you are if you are so weak in the English language. Yes, and you and because of your weakness of the English language, you plagiarize a conversation that I've had, which is not a conversation I've had. Guys, it is here. It is here. It is here. It says Allah says uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi, and He's here saying that He prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear, speak salah. Come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. In the debate, 
only praise I use from what I just said. Do you mind, do you mind to let me listen? No, praise. I don't mind actually. Why? No, in English. Could I, language. if you're right, could I put put it, it, uh, it, 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 and it, 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 I can't, I can't help you anymore. I cannot help you anymore. It's over. Ladies and gentlemen, down to so six weeks. It's how over. Good night. Salam alaikum. Does Allah pray to? How many times does I not pray to? Muhammad Jab. Ma cannot. Muhammad Jab. Ma cannot stand on his word while on the debate he says Allah prays for Muhammad today. Today. On the debate, he played with the Arabic. Today, he plays with the uh, English. Shame on Islamic Dawatim. How can you trust those people who represent their Allah, who represent their Prophet? Now, this is just amazing, Sam. Yep. Yeah, I, bring yeah. up, I bring up a simple point, which Muhammad Hijab said in the debate, I knew he was going to do this. Why? Because he's, he's seen us bring up this point before. So he knows ahead of time that I'm going to bring up Surah 33, verse 56, and say that Allah prays. Why? Because we're talking about Trinity versus Tawheed. It's yes. a, a big question for Tawheed. Who's Allah praying to if he, if he prays? So he had all the time in the world to prepare a response, and his response was to lie about what I said and then attack me based on something I didn't say and then to scream victory and claim that he schooled me in Arabic the Muslim crowd bought it all the way. They were they were cheering for that, right? But there's a uh, there's there's a problem with this. Even though he goes even though he goes on, and when I ask him, what does the word salah mean? Salah means dua, which as we've seen is worship, supplication. That's what it means. That's what his God is doing. He acknowledged that, and then when we get to his uh, his interaction with Hatun. Uh, Muhammad Hijab had all the time in the world, all the time in the world to prepare his response. And notice, he was clearly, he was clearly prepared with his response, right? He's referring to specific minutes in the debate where he said certain things, right? So he had obviously spent six weeks. Okay, how, uh, people are going to bring this up. What do I say? And his response there was, hey, I never, I never said anything about praying. I said P-R-A-I-S-E. That's what I was talking about. Allah praises Muhammad. And then when she's pointing out, no, 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 no. You said, hey, David says praise to. It's for, not to. You, ob you, were, obviously, you were obviously talking about prayer. His response was, I can't do anything else to help you and to leave. Yes, exactly. And this exactly. is, uh, th think about this. He, he just, there's nothing else he can do to help her. Well, there is something he could do to help her. He could, he could start by telling the truth and acknowledging what he said and acknowledging what the Quran said. And this is, this is all related, by the way. Um, yeah. If you're going to distort and misrepresent what the Quran says, why wouldn't you distort and misrepresent what I say? Why wouldn't you distort and misrepresent what you say, right? If you acknowledge that, that Salah means dua, <laughs> Then why wouldn't you why wouldn't you just go back and, and misrepresent what you said if if you find out it hurts you later? Uh, if I use an argument, why not distort what I said? If you're going to distort the the words that you claim are the words of Allah, as almost every Muslim in this comment section is doing right now, distorting the words of Allah, right? They're all saying with a straight face, Salah? No, it doesn't mean prayer. It means one of these fifty things that we're going to just throw out there with no things. linguistic basis whatsoever, with no support from a dictionary. We're just going to say it. We're just going to say it over and over again. If you Muslims have no respect for the words of your own God and the words of your own holy book, of course you're going to misrepresent what I say. Of course you'll misrepresent what Sam says. Of course you'll misrepresent what Hatun says. And of course you, you'll, re, you'll misrepresent and distort what you yourselves say if, it, if it's to your advantage. This is the God you serve. Yeah. By the way, David, even that definition is going to backfire because he ends up now showing that Allah worships Muhammad. So I just want to be clear. I want to be clear. <clears throat> you saw what David Wood just broke down. At first, Muhammad Hijab did acknowledge David's definition of Salah because he didn't say, no, Salah doesn't mean pray. You got it wrong, David. 
Salah for Muhammad, not to Muhammad, in the context of David defining Salah as prayer for Muhammad. So he never corrected the definition, mm -hmm. but then he made it worse for himself. He said that Salah, the literal meaning is dua, and we saw from Muhammad, not the debater, Muhammad the prophet, so-called prophet, the false prophet, saying that dua is the essence of worship. So in defining Salah in this manner, hijab ends up, albeit that was not his intention, he ends up <clears throat> acknowledging that his God worships when he performs Salah. But now he says praise. Now it's going to get worse. Now to his credit, David, I just want to be clear, because again, we're trusting Jesus. Guys, we're trusting Jesus Christ to give us the grace to speak accurately and honestly. If we made mistakes, may the Lord forgive us and protect us from this. Because we, we don't want to do what the Muslims do. We serve the God of truth. And our God is not honored when we lie. So God forbid we deliberately lie. May he save us from that. He's getting the definition of Salah when used of Allah that it means praise. He is getting it from Muslim scholars. But now I'm going to show you how it backfires against Muhammad Ajab and all the Muslims. David, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. I I'm about to laugh. Laugh from joy. Because, in guys, understand what Muhammad Hijab just said. Please listen to what he said. He said, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm excited. Thank you, Jesus. How easy you make it to prove the truth of the gospel and expose Islam. He just said, I meant to say praise. In other words, Allah praises. Who? Now, let's go with his definition, David. Hey, Sam, Allah Sam, praises. I, thought, I thought all praise was due to Allah. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, you, you see, you're already anticipating where I'm going with this. But let's go yeah. with his definition. Salah for Muhammad means Allah praises for Muhammad. Guys, can I ask you a question? According to his definition, that means Allah is now performing praises on Muhammad's, be Muhammad's behalf. In other words, it's like me saying, hey, David, you know what? You don't need to praise. I'm going to praise for you. So who is Allah praising when he praises for Muhammad. So in other words, he's performing the act of praising for Muhammad. In other words, he's actually worshipping on behalf of Muhammad for Muhammad's sake. So Muhammad, I'm going to do the praising for you. So it's okay. So now, Allah, who are you praising? You, you see the problem? Yeah. He didn't solve the problem. He actually made it even worse. If It's like me saying, hey, David, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to do some praises, not just for me, but for your sake. I'll be praising for you and me. Now, you guys understand what that means. I'm now going to be worshiping God and worshiping God, not just on my behalf, but for David's behalf. So now, Mr. Hijab, who does your God praise when he's praising for Muhammad on behalf of Muhammad? So that's the first problem. Mm -hmm. But now, let's see what... Ibn Kathir says. Now again, he didn't make up that definition. To his credit, he's simply quoting Muslim scholars. This is Ibn Kathir's interpretation of chapter 33, verse 43. You can read Ibn Kathir's translation in an abridged form in English online. You can go to Q, the letter Q, T-A-F-S-I-R dot com. You can read this abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir for free online. This is his explanation of 3343. Guys, Listen, David already saw where I was going with this. Allah's salah means that he praises his servant before the angels. Let me repeat. Allah's salah means that he praises his servant before the angels. Now let's see what he says about 3356. 3356. Al-Bukhari said, Abu al-Aliyah said, Allah's salah is his praising him, Muhammad, before the angels. Allah's Salah is praising Muhammad before the angels. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see what the Quran says about praising. Okay, you guys ready? Let's see what the Quran says about praising. I'll just read two. I mean, man, I can... Let me read, yeah, two. Because I got a plethora of passages. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Folks, Ibn Kathir... And Muhammad Ajab, who's simply parroting scholars like Ibn Kathir, admit that Allah Salah is Allah in heaven, in front of the angels, praising Muhammad as well as the other believers. Now, watch this. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praises, all praises and thanks be to Allah. Wait, David. 
This fashion says all praises belong to Allah, which means only Allah can be praised. Folks, Muhammad Hijab just admitted Allah worships Muhammad. Bam! If Allah praises Muhammad, as well as other believers, let me be fair, because in 3343, it's Allah performing salah for the believers, those that he guides out of darkness into the light of Islam. If Allah is praising Muhammad and Muslims, that means Allah is now worshipping his creatures. So yes, Muhammad Hijab's definition, Ibn Kathir's definition, these Muslims defining Salah's praise means that the Muslim God is busy worshipping creatures. Bam! Let me one more let me read one more. Just one more. Okay. Fifty verse thirty nine. So bear with patience, O Muhammad. All that they say and glorify the praises of your Lord. So Muhammad has said, glorify your Lord by praising him. So we expect that a creature will praise his Lord. And yet here we have Allah praising Muhammad and other Muslims. And they are trying to convince us, David, by redefining Salah, that it doesn't mean their God worships. Bam. Yeah, that is the ongoing problem here, uh, that namely in a, in a specific situation, Muslim apologists and many Muslims, uh, in the chat section will just say anything that they think can help them with right. the problem at hand, even yeah. if they're burying themselves and their own God in another way, not realizing it, right? So yeah. guys, did you catch? I mean, j just think about this, right? Uh, says in the Quran, all praises are due to Allah. So you go to Muslims during their prayer. Muslims, what are you doing? We're praising Allah. And then you go even up to the angels. Angels, what are you doing? We're praising Allah. And then you go to Allah himself. Allah, what are you doing? Are you praising yourself? No, I'm praising Muhammad. But th this is the religion of pure monotheism and, and no idolatry whatsoever. You've got a God who spends his time praising, praising Muhammad when he says all praise is due to him. You know, you know what they'll have to do? They, they'll have to do the same thing they'll do with, uh, uh, if anyone is uh, familiar with this, uh, Muhammad said in the Hadith that if you swear by anything, if you swear by anything except Allah, you're associating it as a partner with Allah, you're deifying it, and therefore only swear by Allah. Because if you, if you swear by something else, if you say, by my mother's grave or something like this, you're deifying it. Now that seems absolutely silly that you think you're deifying something like that. But if we're going to be consistent, we have to wonder, why does Allah swear by literally everything in the Quran. He swears by all kinds of things, but then there, he even says, I swear by the seen and the unseen. But guess what? There are only two kinds of things, seen and unseen. So if he swears by the seen and the unseen, he swears by literally everything. Therefore, therefore, if Allah swears by literally everything, and according to Muhammad, if you swear by something other than Allah, you're deifying it, you're associating it as a partner with Allah, you're committing shirk, then we can say that Allah has committed more shirk than anyone else in history. And yes. Allah is an idolater. And Allah, in that Islam should actually be understood as pantheism, everything is God, rather than monotheism. That's what we would expect. But the Muslim response is, well, when Allah does it, it doesn't count. It doesn't matter what Allah does. Allah can, if, if, if it's laid down as a rule that anytime you do this, it's this, you can't, you still can't say that, that Allah can't do it, right? Um, so here they'd have to say, yes, all praise is due to Allah. And if you if you, you should only direct your praises towards Allah. And you go up to Allah and he says, ah, I praise Muhammad, I praise Muhammad, I praise Muhammad. Well, aren't, aren't, aren't you doing something wrong there? Aren't you calling him? Aren't you calling Muhammad Allah then Allah? And his response is, no, it's just different when I do it. Yeah, because remember, creatures praise Allah, but Allah can praise whom he wants. Mm -hmm. He's free. He's sovereign. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Allah is above even his own law and he's above his own commands and he can praise whom he wants and swear but dude you make it sound like Allah's bound to his own his own laws and he has to be consistent what's wrong with you ya kafir mm -hmm. what's wrong with you now david let me know when you're ready for the icing on the cake to prove that the muslim god worships you let me know because i don't know how much time we got oh well you know yeah. we, we planned on going we planned on going two hours or less. We're already over two hours, so you might as well. We might as well just keep going. Yes, because I want to icing cake. We're not going to keep. I'm... We're not going to keep going. I, I was just going to cut it off right here, but if Sam says icing on the cake, yes, he's got something good there. You, you don't want to miss this. No, I got the, the icing on the cake to settle. And guys, do us a favor. Take this video and yesterday's video. Spread these videos because 
you just heard the utter decimation of all the pathetic excuses and arguments that the Muslims have leveled to deny that their God worships, praises, and prays like Muslims do. Oh, and, and Lord hey, hey. willing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I, just, I just want to no, say, no, al along those same lines that you just pointed out, as far as taking these videos and using them, uh, people, we are not stingy with uh, any of any of the material that we use. So if you yes. want to download this video, take a clip that you particularly like, or that's an answer to your Muslim friend or something like that, feel free to take the video, upload it, upload it to your own channel, right? Yes. We, don't, we don't care. Upload them, upload them to your own channel. Um, for those of you who uh, speak different language, if you want to take anything we say, um, Please. either add subtitles to it and put it on your own channel or just say it in your, in your own words, in your own language, and then upload yeah. yourself saying it. Don't worry about giving us credit. We don't care. So, yeah, exactly. uh, so feel take free to use material. our material. Yeah. Take the articles, translate them, use them. That's why we're doing this to equip the body of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the truth until we see everyone, all Muslims bow before Jesus. That's what we're doing. It. It's not, we hate them. We want them to get saved. And fall in love with their only hope of salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord, the Father's beloved Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the icing on the cake, and then I just want to make maybe a few, you know, prayer requests, but icing on the cake. If there are, if there's a Muslim here who's going to honestly answer this, is it not true that part of your worship, your five daily prayers, you recite chapters of the Quran? We know the answer. I'm not going to wait for a Muslim to answer this, but everyone knows that when the Muslims perform their five daily prayers, they're basically reciting certain chapters of the Quran, right? The recitation of the Quran in their prayers, that's their worship. Right, David? Mm -hmm. Okay. Guys, do you want more proof that Allah worships like Muslims do? Here you go. Remember, what do the Muslims do in their five daily prayers? They recite certain chapters of the Quran. And in each prayer, they have to begin with Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter, which we can discuss in a future session. Remember, Reciting chapters of the Quran is an act of worship. Right, David? That's what they do? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. At Tirmidhi, hadith number 660. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's messenger said, man, I'm getting excited. I'm getting chills reading this. A thousand years, guys, pay attention to the contradiction here. A thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth. A thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth. Allah recited... Taha and Yasin. If you guys don't know what that is, that's surahs 20 and 36. A thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth, Allah was busy reciting to himself chapter 20 and chapter 36 of the Quran. And when the angels heard the recitation, they said, happy are the people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this and happy are the tongues which utter this. Now, Two problems. Number one, last time I checked, David, and I'm no scientist, I thought that there is no time before the creation of the heavens and the earth because time came into being when the cosmos was created. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm, you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, right? According to modern cosmology, that is correct, sir. But, sir, you just read before heavens and earth were created, before the cosmos was brought into being, a thousand years. That means there was time even before time was created. The first problem I have. But then before the heavens and the earth, you have nothing but Allah, right? Because angels, they didn't exist before the heavens. The heavens had to be created, and then the angels were created to dwell in the heavens. Allah, all alone, by himself, David, all alone. I'm about to laugh. I'm going to hold back my laughter. All alone, by himself, in complete nothingness. Allah recites chapters 20 and 36 to himself. And Muslims are telling me Allah doesn't worship like them. Okay. I'm convinced. You ready to go to the mosque this Friday and take shahada? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly ready. I mean, how cool is it to have a God who prays and worships? <laughs> recites the Quran like them. Praises like them. Praise like them. All right. But no, Allah does not worship. He does not pray. What are you guys talking about, you dumb kafirs? All right. No. And uh, what, 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 it's sad, but it's cool. But the Muslims in the, in the chat section, they're going to keep simply denying it, right? I mean, denying, their, <laughs> denying simple meanings of simple words, um, saying that the Quran doesn't say what it obviously says. 
they'll keep attacking Christianity, not realizing that the objections don't actually apply to Christianity, but they do apply to Islam. And they'll keep stomping their feet and thumping their chest, saying, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't. You liar, 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 liar. And when we show that their own apologists lie, they don't care. Um, when we tell them the truth, they call it a lie. So a, a, as disheartening as it can be to see that a, re, an, a religion, an ideology has brought people to this, has, has brought them to this state, um, the positive side is the people who are watching and the people who are, who are paying attention in the chat, they can see this, right? They can see it happening, right? They, 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 they'll sit there and look, wait a minute. They just refuted this objection in 15 different ways. And this Muslim is still denying it and calling them liars. David and Sam just quoted 15 passages from the Quran and the Hadith saying one thing. And the Muslim is over here saying that none of their sources ever say that and calling these guys liars. And so people will see this more and more and more and so they're going to start to see the true spirit of islam and what we really want to see we want to see some of the muslims in the comment section in the chat section starting to acknowledge wow why is it why is it that i always have to defend a lie? why is it that i keep having to make things up and why is it that i have to completely destroy things like basic grammar the meanings of basic words. Why do I keep having to do that for my religion? Maybe this isn't the truth. And why do my leaders keep making things up about Christianity? Why do they keep making things up about Islam? Why do they keep saying people said things that they never said? Why do they keep doing this? Why do they deny their own words? Why do they do this? Maybe this tells me something about the ideology. Maybe this tells me something about the God I serve and maybe he just isn't worth serving anymore. And that's when they leave Islam. And that's what we want to see. Yes, uh, and, and then and then hopefully, hopefully, once they've been freed from that bondage, we hope and pray that they will then look and say, I need the truth. Sam, who is the truth? Yes, I will. I'll quote the words of our beloved master. The reason why creation exists, because everything was created for him, the father's beloved, the very heart of the father in the flesh. Jesus Christ answered and said to him, I am the way and the truth. And the life, no one comes to the Father apart from me. John 14, verse 6. The words of our beloved Lord, our Master, our Sovereign, the Father's Son, the beloved of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, our King. So praise His holy name. Amen. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, but I did yep. want to I did want to bring up one last uh, comment. By the way, thank you for everyone uh, in the yes. uh, in the in the super chat. Uh, everything uh, everything helps uh, a lot. And uh, for anyone who came in late, if you get a chance, hit that like button. That helps as well. Um, if you w weren't here earlier when we uh, were talking about DCCI, um, go to DCCI, uh, their YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to them. They're doing awesome work over there in the UK. Uh, but one final comment here. Now, Sam, I was thinking. Yes. Originally, I was thinking we do one live stream on Allah praying. Um, and then I was thinking, uh, well, then once we got closer, I realized it's going to be hard to go through all the sources and to also show video clips. So we split it into two, but I thought we'd be yeah. done after that. But here we have uh, our good friend, Daoud21, um, saying, please watch the debate between Hatun and Ijaz Ahmed on this topic. It's only 12 minutes and try to refute it. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, yeah, so it looks like we are going. Yes. Looks like we're going to watch this 12 minute debate. And Sam, you know, you know, from Ija, if it's coming from Ijaz Ahmed, it's going to be nothing but solid truth. No distortion, oh, no, mi no misrepresentation, no deception, right? We're going to be running and hiding. And after watching that video, I think I'm going to have to give up my apologetics ministry because I cannot handle the amount of truth that he spews. I mean, it's going to be overwhelming, David. I think we need to just stay away for our own integrity and for our ministries because it's going to be an obliteration he's going to obliterate us all right so so now everyone um uh not sure when not sure when we'll do this by the way sam are you free tomorrow yeah lord willing i'm free for yeah because uh, uh, i'll be i'll be live streaming with uh i'll be live streaming with anthony tomorrow yeah. night um but uh maybe i'll try to get both of you on there at the same time and we can have okay. a we can have I, a yeah. little party yeah and if you can't just let me know i'm also available weekend but let me just uh Two things I want to say real quickly because I know we're pressed for time. Mm -hmm. I just want to again acknowledge and I thank Brother David for this. There have been people who have now been um, supporting me on PayPal and Patreon. 
you know, I'm I'm really in a situation where I can't send emails to each every one of you. In time, I will, so bear with me because there's something I'm going through, and the Lord Jesus, I know, will get me out of it. But I just want to acknowledge every one of you. God bless you tremendously for stepping up and supporting me financially to help me do the ministry and care for my two little angels. So, Lord Jesus, bless you. I want to just acknowledge you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And in time, I will contact you and thank you personally. Just bear with me. Do pray for my two angels, Sarai and Zipporah. After Jesus, they're the love of my heart. Keep praying for David, Anthony, all the others, vocab. Pray for our families. Pray for our protection. Pray for our anointing. Pray for the ministry. And I just want to give a shout-out to a couple of brothers here. And if I don't mention you, don't take it personally. I just want to recognize first and last and Protestant <clears throat> believer these two brothers have stuck with me over the years, have prayed for me, have helped me, and have assisted me. God richly bless you and watch over and preserve you for the glory of Jesus. And warrior woman, she is a warrior. Lord bless you. And by the way, Hatun is here. She's DCCI Ministries. Mm -hmm. So God bless you, Hatun. You are a soldier. Mm -hmm. And Jesus just fill us all with his presence, his love, and the spirit. And convict you Muslims to fall in love with him and save you from Islam. We love you, Lord Jesus. So thank you. Amen. So uh, again, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, for joining us. Uh, we will be back, Lord willing, uh, tomorrow night, uh, either me and Anthony or if I can get everyone on uh, me, Anthony and Sam. But we were scheduled to talk about uh, what women have to look forward to in paradise, according to Islam. So uh, so we'll be addressing that. As for this topic, watching the uh, watching uh, the debates and then commenting on it, 12 minute debate. So we'll probably watch it, chop it up into some pieces and then respond and just keep in mind when we go through this and we expose if it's even possible if it's a, if it's possible to expose Ijaz Ahmed and show that he's making things up if we somehow end up doing that just keep in mind Muslims demanded it right it's the Muslims here repeatedly demanding that we do that and asking us to refute what Ijaz Ahmed said so when we do it just keep in mind we weren't going to do it but you made us. All right. All right. See everyone tomorrow. God bless 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. God bless you all. Amen.